Hello, everyone. Welcome to Low Ink June, and uh, we are going to be joining you today. My name is Turtle, and I am joined by Delta here. Hi, I'm Delta. So, our first set is going to be between Riptide and Fermata. Are you familiar with these teams at all by any chance, Delta? Uh, actually, I got a ping by a friend of mine to tell me when Riptide was on stream, but no, I don't know any of these two. Yet. <laughs> Yeah, well, hopefully both of these teams will show us what they're made of, and we can get a good set here today. Yep, we're starting off on Starfish Rainmaker. Honestly, one of my more favorite Rainmaker maps, despite it being kind of bad. <laughs> Rainmaker is definitely one of the most... I always say that Rainmaker is a very volatile mode to play on and that's why i think it's like the most unfair mode to play on but the most interesting mode for spectators oh yeah it gives up a good fight between the two teams if they're even that is but mm. otherwise for the actual players it's kind of bad <laughs> yeah i think like a key aspect of rainmaker on this map is one team is going to need to like try to control the little block area which we call the snipe like where you can watch mid from you can watch uh the rainmaker path from so if like either team can try to approach attack the opponent's snipe or do a really good job holding their own snipe then i think they have a really good chance at winning the game mm. I'm looking forward to like early game uh, flanks from left and right to see if that they can use that to get their Raymaker pop. I mean that's something uh, my my team uses a lot. It's really, I mean it's it's useful sometimes. It works. Other times not so much. Yeah, this map is overall notorious for how easy it is to flank. Is with like how easily accessible the two mid flanks are. So we are going to get started now. Rainmaker Starfish. Uh, let's see what these teams have on their comps. Backline list and not Hydra. Hydra on Rainmaker. Yeah, we see Nautilus is on both teams. So it's definitely going to be. I'm wondering if these how these knots are gonna play around the map. I think Inkjet can be very strong for getting high ground and pushing opponents out of high ground. We're gonna see early missiles from both teams here and then And armor. Just Junior trying to grab <laughs> grab the Raymaker really fast despite no people down on the opponent side. Yeah. Fermata does have mid control here though, so hopefully they can use that mid control to work out push. But the inkjet comes out of the side of Riptide, not gonna make it easy for Gibbs to get anything here with the Rainmaker. Rainmaker going down to the inkjet. I think uh, Riptide already took their snipe, and they're just trying to regain mid at this point. Yeah, that was a really good job by Riptide there, being very patient in mid, waiting for the opponent to come to them instead of just walking one by one into Fermata, giving them a free push. They're looking for an opening, but they lose the Raymaker in the midst of it. Ooh, two down here. Cryptid is going to need to hold mid the best they can. They're going to try to get jumps here. We do see a brush hiding in the corner. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, the Kegel is able to figure out where the brush is and kill them. Three specials on the side of a... Uh... <laughs> the yellow team. They're using Buya at the moment, trying to get probably the Hydra out of snipe. Oh, nice pick on the brush. That is going to make things very much easier for Pomada since brushes can be super annoying on defense since they can literally be hiding anywhere. <laughs> oh, Ooh. super unfortunate. But good missiles by Kipu there. Pressure uh, Riptide. But unfortunately, Fermata's push is going to end here. They're go going to be able to hold mid for now, at least. So we'll see if they can get enough specials to get in in a second. They still don't have lead, but they're looking for an opening at the They see people in mid. They're holding up. Oh, they're using missiles. All four specials popped up the side of Fermata. They definitely could get something out of this. Two <laughs> go down to the Yeah, I think they were just trying to reset it to a better spot to make it harder for the bottom. 
push that out. But now there's three people down on the side of Riptide. And four, that's a quad for... The the, the CDS picks it up. But Octobush, oh. as you said, just hiding, getting the kills. Yeah, Octobrush is like, I feel like as a weapon, if like the Octobrush hits you first, you are probably going to lose that 1v1. So like, Formata needs to be really careful to catch up wow. with Wow. Great lead on the side of Riptide. This can be really hard for Formata to bring back, but it, whether they're running LDE or not, this is very beneficial because LDE is active at the moment. Yeah, I feel like 25 on this map is like really good, but like it's actually super rare that I see this lead hold because it is so fast to push on this map. I think like, but you only really need to go through like that little alley that KGAL was just flooded by. So we're gonna see Riptide hold mid here. The brush is trying to get as much territory as they can. Rushing the TDS. Oh, unfortunately, their teammates were there to help, but that it will be a trade. 3v3 on both sides. Riptide's just holding the Rainmaker up on right. And they go down with it. Um, but two, uh, two down on Fermata. Can they hold this Rainmaker at the moment? Yeah, we're gonna see the cake out pop of Booyah Bomb. I think they're just gonna try to make sure that the opponent can't grab the Rainmaker. Oh, they throw it to mid. <laughs> Ike here just messing around with the Rainmaker, stalling for Mata. There's 45 seconds on the clock. They need to do the push now. Yeah, we're gonna see Umbre here inkjetting, trying to get as much control as possible. Missiles also come out, able to get the other Nautilus. Two down on the side of Riptide, Fermata definitely could get a really good push out. Missiles though, going to make it very difficult. Uh, unfortunate for Fanata, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately Gibbs could not back up for the missiles. It's really annoying when you're trying to dodge missiles, but you end up it going into your teammates' missiles. One down on the side of Riptide. They could probably make a push out of this. They pick up the Rainmaker after all. Yeah, good decision by Fermata to pick that up to make sure they can get an overtime push here. Using Jet, trying to get the Octopus. Octopus is down. Two down on the side of Riptide, however, the Nautilus did go down for Fermata. Seems there's going to be a K-Shot flanking, Rainmaker going top left. However, the Inkjet tried to stop them. Oh, uh, the missiles get them from behind. Wow. Good game from both sides. I, thought, I, I think that left decision to go left instead of right was probably the best decision they could make at that moment. If they went right, the jet would have killed them. If they went left, yeah. at least they had the wall there to protect them a little, but the since they couldn't move as much as they were holding a Rainmaker, the missile got them, so. Something I noticed that match was both teams had a really good sense of special coordination. Like, whenever I, would, whenever I saw, like, one special pop, like, I could almost guarantee that there was, like, at least a second one popped alongside that. So I think, like, that's what allowed, like, really back and forth gameplay because it's really unlikely that people are going to get specials at the same time. True. We're going into Clamblitz Piranha Pit now. Um, <laughs> not one of my most favorite maps. It's just pure long range. Long range weapons is where they dominate here. CDS, yeah. E Leader, Ray, even. For, but. I think, like, Kegel could be very good for Fermata if they want to stick with it, because Wall is really good on this map since it's super flat. But I feel like both of these teams have comps that, like, work pretty well on this map overall. I agree. The Hydra is probably going to be a big threat if they keep playing it. Once yeah. they get situated on, let's say, Greats or by Basket, there really isn't much the opponent team can do to get in. Also, another thing I'm wondering is, are either of these teams going to have, like, a special specifically for pushing it on clams? So I'm wondering if we're going to see, like, a bubble blower, maybe a baller for getting jumps from either of these teams, because they didn't really have specials that could, like, directly, like, block out people right. trying to stop the push for clams. Hmm. 
<laughs> Maybe we see the V52 <laughs> with Ray. I'm going to be completely <laughs> honest. I really hope we don't see that. <laughs> uh. But yeah, we are now beginning with Clam Blitz on Piranha Pit. Let's see what these teams have to offer here. Oh, there is the Squeezer. squeezer right? The and Hydra the Pick stays. Yeah, we're going to see Riptide sticking with the exact same cop here. Oh, the Nautilus does change to a Bower Nautilus. And I believe the brush was on Inkjet before, if I'm right. Yeah. It was a v, uh, v brush. But now they're just taking mid, trying to push up with paint and whatnot. Yeah, on really, the side of Riptide. Really good positioning by Cryptid here in a spot where they can watch over all mid will not be in danger of getting rushed since. If you are, if someone's trying to fight you in close range with Hydra, you are not going to win that fight. Yep, they're very close to armor, halfway. I mean, most people say that Hydra doesn't get armor too fast, and I'd say I agree, but halfway, not terrible after painting almost half the map. <laughs> yeah, here we're going to see Kabu try to see if they can make space on right. However, with two splat wings watching the area ahead, it might be very difficult for them to move up here. I think they're looking for a special, but one go down. Oh, one of them goes down. Uh, I don't think this is a perfect time to push at the moment. Especially Ooh, since the other team has team armor. Yeah, armor came out on the side of Riptide. Missiles too, so... Kermada is going to have to be forced very far back here. So we see them try to get even more mid control, and it seems they have two more specials to extend their push even further. I think Riptide's waiting to make a ball so they can push him with oh. all her. Unfortunate death for uh, the Octopus though, but it's 3v3 on both sides. Yeah, Riptide has enough clams. Oh, there's the Power Clam. I was about to say, they should have enough to pass and form the Power Clam with 19. Nope. And the Baller. Yeah, that baller is unfortunately not going to make the basket. Gibbs and anti plugs holding the area by there here. Missiles making it difficult for them though. Baller trying to go for the right rail uh, flank, but backs out. I guess it was just a very bad decision to be in. Yeah, I feel like an issue with Baller Nautilus that we're noticing a lot here is it's very difficult for the weapon to follow up off of the spots they get into with Baller. So like, a lot of time when I see weapons like Nautilus uh, played with Baller, they kind of use Baller as almost a panic button, but this Nautilus is trying to push with it, which I understand because Baller pushes are very powerful and special. True. I think uh, something that we haven't been seeing a lot is the point sensors. I think point sensors would benefit the Riptide a lot since they're using Hydra. They put the ball in, uh, and they capitalize with another wow. ball. Wow. I, I was honestly surprised that push would work because one of them was all the way down in like the area that like cop players affectionately call useless. So I am very surprised that like that baller push with like one person all the way down at the bottom was able to work. But good job on Riptide getting that executed. Yeah, it's a huge lead given that they just entered into the two minute mark. Half the game has already been played. And they've already gotten almost half the points in, so... Yeah, however, Fermata is going to try to get their specials to push here. They do pop a raid, and they have Bubbles and Weir Bomb ready, and Zap is nearly to armor. So they're going to see if they can get anything off of specials here. However, the Hydra make it very difficult for Fermata to move up at all. Yeah, and they have armor now, and they use it too. I think it's a perfect time to counter yeah. push. All specials come out for all teams pretty much right now, except for the missiles and baller on the side of Riptide. They're just holding those specials, which is a really good decision because they don't need them right now since they're still holding mid. Oh, the shot does go down, unfortunately not able to pop their missiles in time. Oh, it's just Hydra and Octobrush. Yeah, it's just the Hydra brush. Nice punish on the brush. Really good job by Fermata using their range to outrage the brush there to make sure they could get picks, and they're gonna I get the lead for that. Yep. Almost, uh, like three ish clams uh, ahead of us. Uh, wow, Umbra is Riptide. still stayed in there, able to use the wall and the bubbles for their teammates to hold. And Anti Plug does get killed with bubbles, but unfortunately for them, the push is gonna end there. Oh, could not get the jump clam store there. 
Yeah, they really did keep the basket open for a long time, but they just ran out of steam. They weren't able to put any more clams in after the first push. Um, and now they're just holding mid so that Riptide doesn't push up and uh, take the lead back from them. Yeah, however, that being said, Riptide is going to be very close to specials here. They have all the right now, so they definitely could make a push out of this. Uh, we just saw Fermata throwing clamps off the map <laughs> in order to prevent Riptide from getting some, and I think that's a good idea since I, that's like going to be the big issue for Riptide here. They are able to wow. get the push with Quad Special. Are they going to have enough clamps? Yeah, they do have yeah. enough clamps. That so, game went back and forth. Wow. Yeah, but the end, that was a huge push on the side of Riptide. It was just, they used all their specials, and uh, Fermata just wasn't able to keep up. <laughs> yeah. I think, like, nine missiles from the K-Shot there. It's really interesting how, like, K-Shot has, like, quickly changed the Cobb community from, like, an aggressive weapon to like almost a support weapon that I've noticed gets more specials than like a lot of armor support players. True. And I think that, uh, those missiles were really beneficial for uh, that last game that we saw. I mean... Yeah. What missiles <laughs> do is they force like the opposing team to split up and I think that really messed with Armada's coordination that game and their defenses. They kept backing out of mid, which <laughs> was exactly what they wanted on the side of Riptide. They wanted mid so they can push up. So yeah. missiles was, I think, uh, versus CDS, which was what they were. Was it CDS or VDS? Yeah, they, they had missiles. Yeah, that map they played VDS the last one. Yeah, so they had rain versus the the missile spam. It's like rain was good for arm, like taking away their armor. But apart from that. The missiles was way more beneficial on the side of Riptide. Yeah, so speaking of missiles, we're going to be moving into tower control right now. <laughs> I think missiles is going to be very strong on tower control, since if you missile the tower during checkpoint, um, they just have to get off. checkpoints on this map are so long. Yeah, they just have to get up. So Riptide will have plenty of opportunities to missile the tower and stop the enemy. Uh, I can't tell if that's CBS or VDS. Ooh, we wow, see a sploosh. Sploosh. Yeah, the Nautilus opts for a Sploosh 7, which is really interesting because it's a much shorter range weapon than Nautilus, and I feel like it has a very different role to Nautilus, so I'm really wondering how Riptide is going to utilize that weapon. Especially since I, I believe that Nautilus is very well played in this battle. Like it's really, just yeah. really good for you. But yeah, uh, Riptide takes the, uh, the tower early, using Hammer too. Good job by like, Sparta being very patient, waiting for the opponents to come to them and being very passive. They're able to get two down. Will they be able to get counter push off of this? Uh, their oh. CDS goes down, or VDS actually. It's it just still trying. a 3v3 though, and it seems like Riptide is just going to keep staggering in. Missiles though might make it very hard for them to push. There's what we talked about, missiles at the checkpoint, however Gibbs is going to be able to get right back on tower. And I think they should be able to get at least the checkpoint with Booyah Bob out. I like how the, uh, he's just holding armor until after the, uh, the checkpoint so they can get yeah. into the court. Because court in this map is by far the worst place to be in. Yeah, especially with the Hydra just holding the high ground, watching over most of the court. It can be very difficult to push it. I think like something I noticed that Fermata hasn't been doing too much this match that they should be doing a lot more is bombing out the Hydra because like Hydra basically has to give up its charge if like a well aimed bomb is thrown at it. Yeah. Brush trying to get a kill from Snipe but uh falls off instead and uh Suction's going oh damn oh. seven. Good job by Gibbs backing into teammates, able to not directly drive the hammer. However, they are gonna Riptide is gonna get lead, but Fermata's easily able to stop tower after that. So both teams are still at the same checkpoint, so this is like easily anyone's game still, despite mm -hmm. Riptide's lead. You can tell Keisha already has missiles and they used it. This <laughs> I think just gets so many missiles, like I do not understand how 
enjoy playing this game with so much painting. Unfortunate on the side of her, uh, uh, for Mata, the missiles killed their one armor weapon. Yeah. yeah. We are going to come out on the side of Fumata trying to pressure Earthside. Unfortunately for Fumata, no picks off the Booyah. However, the Inkjet is going to get the Hydra down. That could be very crucial since Hydra is a huge defense helmet for Riptide. However, they are going to force two down on the side of Fumata, so I think Riptide should be able to hold this. Yeah. They still have they have three arm uh, three specials. They use missiles, but uh they're holding I believe Jet and Hammer at the moment. Which yeah, they can't really. Uh, Fermata can't do much at the moment. I mean, they're three down. Yeah, and... Fermata, unfortunately, without any specials being popped except missiles, goes three down. And Rotation's gonna get another missile on their side. Like, <laughs> how? <laughs> this cage shot is just non stop painting. Hammer! Able to get what? They are gonna be shot by ah. two people and go down, though. But so the knock kill was very, uh, very good for the side of, uh, a Riptide, I think. I mean, a sploosh for a knot. Yeah, I feel like usually on, like, usually with, like, aggro weapons, like, front lines, the, like, sploosh is a good example. Especially since the sploosh is running QR, trading is really good. Since, like, if you die with QR, you're either gonna respawn really fast, or... Riptide, yeah, let's get another Anyways, if you die with QR, you're either gonna respawn really fast, or set up your QR to be activated next time you die, so like, trading with QR is super good for that reason. Yep, Riptide using armor, and they're holding their specials, apart from missiles. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with Wolfie being on tower, I think like, it would help Riptide a lot to have a sploosh up in the front, while having like, say, a the Hydra. Yeah, the Hydra tower for them. But at the moment, it doesn't really matter. They have leave. They have don't have any more checkpoints to go through. Uh, yeah, I think we're like... going for the knockout to end this quickly. <laughs> yeah, for Fumatsu just needs to find something. They have Buya. They use Buya. They're trying to get kills off of this. If they get if anything, especially the Hydra, they are not going to be able to get them with the Buya though. Brush does go behind in a really annoying spot. Gets multiple buffers of Fermata, and it's just the cake out. He's yeah. not going to be able to get the power here, unfortunately. So that's going to be a 3 0 for Riptide there. Really good job by them. Coordinating specials and relentlessly using missiles. <laughs> the missiles were always, always on the map. The cake shot just spammed like an end zap, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Eight missiles that game, like. Those are quite impressive numbers from the K-Shot. Right. Extremely oppressive on the side of a uh, Formata. Like, what What are they supposed to do? Yeah. I Just... still think both teams did, like, a really good job coordinating there overall. Like, they both would pop specials at the same time. They both would make sure that they're helping each other with fights. Like, we saw that when teams were trying to take down... One for my was trying to take down Riptide's Ultra Stamp, for example. But yeah, overall good showing from both teams, but Riptide is going to take the set 3 0. I really like the Sploosh pick. I mean, the Sploosh, every time it like appeared in front of Fermat's, like, uh, Fermatsu's, Fermata's uh, front line, they got a pick or at least a trade, right? Yeah. So it was beneficial for the tower play because the rest of the players could, could push by themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised to see Sploosh there, honestly, since most of the time when I see Sploosh run, it's on Rainmaker, since Hammer is really good for getting pops, Sharking is super good on Rainmaker, and Sploosh pops Rainmaker super fast as the main weapon. Mm -hmm. And with a Hammer, if you yeah. really wanted to. I do that sometimes <laughs> when I play Tent on Rainmaker. Yeah, we are going to uh, take a quick break, but we will be back with another round of Swiss very shortly, so stay tuned.
Welcome back to round two of Low Ink June. We have uh, Radical Dreamers and Useless Charger Weekend as our two teams from Group B. We're starting off with uh, Zones Gobi Arena. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say about this map. I personally don't like it. Well, but here I'm joined with... Uh, hi, it's, it's, it's me, Turtle. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> so... First off, I just want to say I can really empathize with the name of Useless Charger Weekend because I have had quite a few subpar chargers throughout my x rank experience. <laughs> so hopefully if there are any chargers in this lobby, they can be very useful. Right, this is the charger map. Like, this yeah. is like the backline map, and actually, it's just so good for backline. But for everything else, um, if you remember when we were talking about court in... Uh, Sturgeon, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Zones, zones the court. They just made yeah <laughs> the objective court, which is the worst place to be in. Uh, that's why Chargers are like, oh yeah, we get to stay in pot. It's very nice. Um, I, I know like a lot of E leader players absolutely love this map. Uh, I think X flow players and a lot of Splatly players also, Hydra players specifically, also really like this one. I think something I'm really interested in seeing is if either team is going to go through like that flank that can like take you to the like all the way behind the opponents through the side. Mm -hmm. I feel like if there's like frontline weapons like brushes, 52 gals, they could have a really fun time if they're able to just sneak through the little slick area for free. Yeah, it's a great flank despite the fact that it's super long to get to. Yeah. It's often really hard to notice and call out since it's such a narrow area. So... Hydra and Dynamo is the back lines for this. Uh... <laughs> yeah, fortunately or unfortunately, we are not going to see any useless chargers this set, or at least this first game. Uh, it's really interesting. Is that custom Rage Blaster on the side of Radical Dreamers? I believe it is. I, I think the even crazier part is none of these players are using LDE on zones, right? It's a little sus suspect on oh, my no. side. Oh no. Well, anyways, uh, I no, that's custom blaster, but still, custom blaster is a weapon that I don't see much at all. So I'm really interested to see what Doctor is going to be able to do with the weapon here. We uh, bomb coming out side of Radical Dreamers. They're trying to cap zone. Uh, yeah, that beat up um, ultimately gets a pick and zone neutralized, so really good use of the special. Unfortunately, Eco is not able to get the pick. Oh yeah, also, jump back. another interesting thing I noticed is there are two inkjets on the side of Radical Dreamers, and I think that, like, inkjet is super good here, since it's really good at pressuring that, like, stance area that, like, backlines just love to camp. Wow. Blaster with a direct, but unfortunately it's a trade with the... Uh... 52 gal? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, bl for blasters in this game, it can be very difficult uh, to fight if someone's in your face, and 52 gals just love to get in your face. <laughs> Two on that right flank that you're talking about. The, the Radical Dreamer's getting a, a double. Doctor going for a triple here. Not able to get it yet. Popping the inkjet to try to get the Hydra. Oh, he jumps. Going to force the jump. And able to camp which up. Really good play by Doctor there, using the terrain to their advantage and forcing, well, basically all of uh, useless Charger weekend to back up or respawn. Here we have uh, another jet coming from uh, Radical Dreamers. The Junior here is just trying to farm armor. I mean, they can chain armor using Hydra and Junior, but they also have to use it to get in, like they did right yeah. now. 
really good job by useless charger we can change the armor changing the armors which extends crit push even longer and i think that's good yep that's gonna get the cap and oh really unfortunate that roach couldn't get the pick early but their teammates are going to go down so they do end up getting the 96 gal they haven't kept yet but now they have uh radical dreamer still having the lead despite it being very uh very close to that of a uh, useless charger weekend yeah super back back and forth that that game so far both down. Ooh, yeah, yeah this could be very dangerous for useless charger weekend radical dreamer is going to hold mid hey pro poppy that booyah bomb it does not look like they're gonna get picked yeah the 96 gal on the side of radical dreamers wow well. it's the triple wow <laughs> Useless Charger Weekend is getting a little bit too anxious. They're just pushing in one by one, not really using their specials to their advantage. Yeah, it's... this Hydra is in a really awkward spot now. That's going to be the game for Red Bull Dreamers. A really interesting game one. I mean, yeah, like that was super unexpected overall, honestly. Like, I was not expecting to see. Like a sea blaster, I was not. Dynamo is also honestly a really rare weapon that I was not expecting to see, and double yeah. Yeah, is also pretty rare from my ex experience. I think, I mean, not only just sea blaster, but being paired up with Dynamo, Octobrush, right? It's it's very interesting picks, but it worked out in, in the end. It just. They locked them out of the necessary positions like Snipe and Plat using uh, what you could say is like long, longish range, more like disjointed range from the yeah. blaster. And Honest a video bomb spam too. Yeah, honestly at first I was super skeptical of Radical Dreamer's comp because I 96 is like 96 and Sea Blaster are weapons you don't usually see, but the 8 jets were super good at pressuring high ground. And then, like, the big, one of the big weaknesses with Brush and Blaster is they don't paint much, and they pretty much need paint to function. But 96 and uh, Penta Dynamo are really good at getting a lot of paint, so I think that really helped out Radical Dreamers comp that game. Arguably, I think that they made up for their uh, deficit by uh, getting a lot of kills because you could see how they use their specials like one after another. They use their inkjet once and then they use the next inkjet. It was just super. U I mean, they just locked them out of zone. Nothing they could do. If, uh, they're just co constantly pressured. Yeah, I think like using specials only when you need them is like a really important concept that like a lot of teams don't really have down. So, really good job by Radical Dreamers doing that. Now, uh, we're moving on to Rainmaker Anchovy Games. Uh, it's also a weird map to to be playing. It's kind of like weird movements that you have to go through, a little Z pattern through mid in order to move the Rainmaker. But We're going to uh, go through the whole tournament without Delta saying anything positive about <laughs> I like anchovy games and wow range blaster no way <laughs> the range blaster representation I love it I know I, I just to love to see <laughs> I love to uh I mean, honestly, dreamers Kong. it does it's... make sense that suction bomb is super good at popping Rainmaker, and like bombs are also really good for Rainmaker defense oh we're gonna see the heavy split like drop for a flank here they're in a dangerous position, so they have to jump out, but like, I really like the aggressive play from the heavy splat lane. Like, I hear a lot of people actually describe splat lanes as mid lines because they have to play super aggro in this meta. Yeah, they definitely disoriented uh, Useless Charger Weekend. They started pushing left, but Rainmaker was in mid, you know? Yeah. Oh, really nice bubble combo by Doctor Bear, able to get the pick on the shot. K-Pro just by himself and, get, and gets killed by uh, the K-Pro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not even K-Pro. It's the Bubble Forge. Pro. The Forge. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sap was not in a position to follow up off of the rest of their team push. So, Useless Charger Weekend is going to hold here. They are popping an armor, trying to get out, but the Heavy is going to watch the office and stop the 
prolonged useless charge that we get from getting AP out of that. Yeah. Using missiles, uh, they their armor is down at the moment, so this push is very much dead, I would say. Yeah, two down to the side of useless charger we could. We're gonna see Eco here try to take advantage of that pushing up. It gets the pro, try to push that shot. Good ink jet pop, pressuring the high ground. Really more pressure with the Booyah bomb. Yeah. Their energy just... leaders have Spring Baker in a good spot ready to push, and they have picks ready, so they definitely could get to the others. However, the missiles from Tim is going to make it super hard for them to push, and that's gonna be the end of the push. Yeah, two down. A triple from Ooh, Tim, very nice. Oh, can he get the quad? No, <laughs> no way you can get that. But yeah, really good job by Useless Charger Weekend, pushing up on the missiles, taking advantage of their specials as much as they can. Hopefully they can get counter push here to make this an interesting game. Yeah, they're taking back mid. Uh, they, One of them's already on their oh, path. Oh, they're just Oh, a little impatient there, unfortunately, but it's still a 2v2, and it seems like use of Charger Weekend is definitely contesting pop. Oh, uh oh, they got a kill on Tim. Tim. Yeah. He's probably going to stop the push, unfortunately, for use of Charger Weekend. Oh, wait, no! I get away. <laughs> no way! <laughs> A boxy move from Useless Charger Weekend. I really stopped speaking, but <laughs> good job by Useless Charger Weekend. Just sneaking in, grabbing the Rainmaker when Radical Dreamers wasn't ready to shoot them. It's a 3v3 situation right now. They're using their specials, but they're not on class. So all they're really doing is taking back mid. But as long as uh, Useless Charger Weekend can get their specials and hold back that oh, Rainmaker... ...all the way up, unfortunately Useless Charger Weekend does not have anyone to defend. Sorry, I'm the lead. Yet. Wow! 13! Yeah, Seth basically saw that no one on Useless Charger Weekend was able to watch the Rainmaker. So they just kind of ran it low. And that's going to be a full wipe for Useless Charger Weekend. And Radical Dreamers is going to try to take even further. Unfortunately, the bomb from the shot is going to stop their knockout attempt there for now. But they are going to get the pop. Oh, oh even more points. Dominic gets all the way to one. It's just a shot. Shot does clean up the push down. So, useless charger weekend still has a chance if they could go all the way to knockout this game. Yeah, it's going to be really hard. There's only one minute left in the game. At the moment, oh, with the flank from the Octobrush, yeah. getting a double. Oh. This brush is not letting this push die. <laughs> really good job by them standing in triple like, good spot <laughs> that like useless charger we could have a very tough time finding. Yeah, this brush on uh, Radical Dreamer's side is just so good at doing what he's supposed to do, which is flank, skirmish. Get picks, die, I mean, and just does shark. it so well. Yeah, and Shark, yeah. But yeah, Radical Dreamers, it's a 3v2 for them. Um, however, they are playing too aggro here, which makes sense since they have a lead. They really don't need to push anymore with a lead of 1 and 18 seconds left. They are just going to try to hold pressure a mid, see if they can get any picks from overextending use of charging members. Yep. But right from the K shot, this is their last chance to get something. They do get one. Uh, wow. The brush is able to hold them off, though, so that's going to be game. Yeah, no one picked up the Rainmaker at the end, so it just goes to whoever had the highest number. Or lowest, actually. Yeah, but, but r really good job for Radical Dreamers just noticing, oh wait, there's no one defending, so we can just hold forward. 19ka from Echo. Great. That's really good on that brush's side. Yeah, that brush I, just kept sharking and kept punishing useless charger because, like, they could not find a way to deal with him. I think the funny thing uh, from this match is useless charger weekend went for the sneaky push of just pushing, like, get, grabbing the Rainmaker and running with it until they died to get a lead. And then <laughs> Radical Dreamers did the exact same thing back and they got a huge lead off of it. So, kind of like yeah, mirroring really. each other. <laughs> yeah, that was like quite the turn of events. Because like, you would think that like, if Useless Charger Weekend is able to pull that off, they'd think, wait, the other team could also pull that off. <laughs> Hang on. 
But here we're going to enter a map that I I think still has a lot of sneaky potential. Clamblet's on the reef. So if you go on the far left of the map, when you're pushing as the car? pushing team, yeah, yeah, into like the area by the car there, you can get like a lot of sneak pushes off. And I think like the brush is going to have a field day with that on this map. Uh, I, brush. I completely agree. But I think my favorite part of this map is actually under, under mid. Because sometimes people just won't notice and you can just push through under because they'll, all, they'll be on bridge or on their main, right? Or on street. And they just won't see you go under. Which is, uh, honestly, it's like it's right in front of you, but it's a, kind of a sneaky push as well. Yeah, another thing people don't realize about this map that they really should is that, like, uh, well, top mid does get, like, really good map control since it watches over a lot of the map. Bottom mid is where all the clam spawn at the start. Like, right. barely any clam spawn on top mid compared to bottom mid. So if a team can control bottom mid, well, they may not have as good map control as the people holding bridge. They will have the clam control. Let's see if we uh, get another blaster on the side of Radical Dreamers. I, I love Steam Blasters, so I really <laughs> hope they play it again. That'd be so hype. Ah, uh, no blaster. I am so disappointed. <laughs> uh, but they keep a similar ish comp with Dynamo uh, 96 V Brush, but uh, Useless Charger Weekend changes it up a notch with yeah. Hydra Squeezer. The pro switched to Tri Slosher, and I don't know who switched to Squeezer, but someone did switch to Squeezer. <laughs> so here we see Hello Jello just trying to keep their uh, their street to them, but uh, they already uh, Radical Dreamers already has a ball, and they're trying to push in with specials. Yeah, really nice job by them chaining armors, making sure they can push for as long as possible and wow. be super Why? aggressive. Good job on the inkjet by Echo there, getting two members of Useless Charger to get down. Yeah, 42, it's a big push, and game, there's only one minute has passed in the game. They still have clams. It's 2v2. Radical Dreamers definitely can't hold this, but the Hydra are going to try to make it as difficult as possible for them to do so. Unfortunate for uh, Useless Charger Weekend that uh, clams just started spawning under their basket. Kind of oh, weird that decision. power clamp. If they can get... Yeah, they're not getting the power clamp in. Gel, or the brush there. Echo trying to get as much map control as they can, but they're going to have to back up that bridge area. Useless Charger Weekend needs to push up with pain. Like, they need that pain control in order to make something out of the two clams they have. They also need a kill. Oh, one kill? Two? Yeah, that... Yeah, really nice job by Lauren doing the signature uh, tri slosher move of holding forward to the enemy team. <laughs> Since if you're in a close range fight as a tri slosher, you're gonna win it. Just period. Oh. Doctor sadly getting uh, killed by Tim, but another yeah. trade. They Just couldn't the put high in cash uh, anymore. Charger weekend, trying to make sure that Dynamo can't get anything out of that, but that is going to cut down on Radical Dreamer's penalty and bring them even closer to not getting out here. We a bomb into their street. I mean, they're just trying to hold their bridge, but as you said, the sneaky push through car. Echo! <laughs> Love that area so much. More clams, still! Story. I think with the Zap being the last member up and coming all the way from spawn, that's going to be the end of the push. But it is going to cut down on the penalty a lot. Yeah, they only need two power clams and then a little more in order to get the knockout here. This oh, tri yeah, tri Slosher was trying to get some kills, but he over positioned himself. He was getting too far forward and sadly just dies with the trade. Uh, yeah, really good job by Tim there, being in the right position to punish the Dynamo over extending. I noticed that, like, Tim has been really good at punishing opponents' movement patterns lately. Like, I saw one fight where, like, the Zap on the other team was trying to, like, substrate, but uh, Tim was just waiting for the perfect opportunity to get them, and they were able to. However, Doctor is going to try to push up even more here. It's two down on the side of Useless Charger Weekend. It's just the Hydra to respawn here. However, 
rushing the Hydra is very difficult for us. That inkjet wow. is going to make it super easy though. Inkjet double. 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 Will they get the triple? Inkjet triple. triple. Wow. power. <laughs> Echo's just going ham with his ink. Only four plans needed to knock out, and they get all four of those. Wow. KO. That was a huge push. Echo just went in, got the kills, let his teammates do all the work for him when it came to the clams. And Radical Dreamers goes with a 3 0 against Useless Charger Weekend. Yeah, I could tell that, like, Echo had a lot of fun that set. <laughs> They were just able to get so much off and get so many really cool clips and moments that said so good for them. Wow, that was just a really cool set to see interesting picks on the side of uh, Rackle Dreamers. Unfortunately, we didn't see any chargers of uh, useless charger weekend, but I guess that's the point of calling it useless. Maybe yeah, they're trying to use them. <laughs> I, I. I really wanted to make like a statement about how the charger on blank team is not useless, but there was no charger. No charger was useless. <laughs> the charger was technically useless this set. Fortunately or unfortunately for useless charger weekend. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that concludes round two of Loic. We will be back very soon for round three. This will be the last set we will be on commentary so stay tuned uh we'll be right back see ya
kind of uh, create a walk out here and keep all of those fruit punch players back so they can get that second checkpoint. They just need to get about a quarter of the way through it to get lead. And somebody along the backside is able to hop on tower. But a nice triple by Nova. Or Nova. Ooh. Take that a, a quad. Players go down. Flash being the last player up and live at the car. And they do sniff them out. Flash does go, do go down. But they have a long way to go this last side. The equal coming out. They just have three more. Just one point. Oh, for the oh. the equal. The hero of the game. If it wasn't for that equal, this game is over. It tied it. Go there. So the Rainmaker had a really good spot to just push from. So now OK Rumor has only one more chance to push up. They do have advantage and two specials, but they have to get all the way to a knockout. So it's going to be very difficult for them. Let's see what they can do here. Honestly, I was not expecting them to be oh. oh, they already died.
All right, welcome back. We are beginning round three of Loing June Swiss. And today we have Starfall versus Incraft Cult. Uh, my name is Turtle, and I am once again joined by Delta. Hi, yeah, Delta. what's up? <laughs> so, uh, when it comes to these teams, I believe I actually helped uh, Incraft Cult like a long time ago with like coaching uh -huh. and stuff. So, uh, they've definitely been around a while, and I think they've had like a very similar roster to this. So, hopefully, they've been steadily improving since then. That'd be super interesting to see. Personally, I don't know who either of these people are, but I'm looking forward to their match, especially since it starts off on Tower Control Macomart. This is a really fun map, I think. Really good. Yeah. I think, like, something we've seen, uh, like, a huge big thing we've seen the first two sets is Inkjets being really important for high ground. And this is like another one of those maps where you like Inkjet is so useful for yep. taking high ground. Because as the pushing team, the top left area, you like, it's unreachable by default. So you need like an Inkjet or like missiles or rain or something like that to push people off of it. So really interested seeing if we can get an Inkjet on right. one of these or both of these teams here. I'm also looking forward to if we have any weird weapon picks like last round. I love weird weapon picks. Yeah, like. It's super amusing for uh, day one of low ink, I I'd say. I, I think, honestly, that might be one of my favorite things about accommodating low ink. Like, there's a lot of weapons in low ink that, like, a lot of teams in, like, higher level tournaments wouldn't dare pick. And I honestly really respect low level teams for trying really cool weapons and stuff. So, PC Baco, we're starting now. Woo. Ooh, we have a roller on the side of Inkraft Colt here. Wow. That's a weapon that I don't see too often. Even though I think it's a really strong weapon, people just don't play it much. Same thing goes for the T-Tech, or Octoshot. Oh, quick trade for the roller as we start off, but uh... Yeah, yeah trading the armor is going to be really good for Inkraft Colt, because that means it'll be a bit harder for Starfall to push up with no armor. So Octoshot trying to get a kill on the Hydra. If they get the Hydra kill, they're able to push up back into mid, but as it stands, they're just uh, eating Starfall. Yeah, really good job by Hydra. Just being patient, holding mid. So Starfall is going to see if they can push here. It doesn't seem like they're going to have an opening, really. Ooh, a actually, the Hydra is trying to punish the people in mid. Uh, Incraft Colt does pick off Starfall's Tetras, so now they're going to be in control mid here. Oh. 1v1. Yeah. 2v1, actually. And we get a trade. <laughs> Three. 1v1 now. Roller and Tetra only people on. Tetra trying to take the tower. Not able to get much of the roller comes out. Really clean frick, flick there from Stan. And now he's going to try to take tower, but half jump. Yeah. Early push on the side of uh, Incraft Cult. It's not a lot of points, but maybe it'll add up in the end. Yeah, so it's a 3v4 here. Starfall, see if they can push. Now uh, you got two down on the side of our... Uh, actually, they're all going to start pushing up now. Yeah, we see the Hydra here pressuring that top left area. Speed Break does come out for Incraft Colt, though. However, Tag is able to dodge it and... Oh, they actually don't get the checkpoint. I thought they were going to be able to sneak on for that checkpoint because they only need two more points, but really good Speed Break usage by Incraft Colt stopping the push. Now it's and a 2v2 on both sides. People are respawning, but mid is uncontested still. Yeah, we see Stan here trying to just hold the mid best they can and see if they can stop Starfall from pushing in. Can you see the splashdown? Yeah. The <laughs> scared splashdown coming from the yeah. uh, <laughs> the roller. Going down, now there's two down. The roller, there isn't much rollers can do against armors in this meta since it basically stops roller's biggest strength, which is the ability to quickly Ooh. have a one-shot. Great bomb on the side of a uh, Incraft Colt. They're just trying to get everyone off the tower so they don't get Both tech. missiles by Smash there, trying to clear out as many members of Incraft Colt as possible. However, Pink on the side of Incraft Colt does get a double, and that's going to push Starfall all the way back here. 
and they keep pushing. Yeah, Alemo's trying to look for a kill here between the two stacks, uh, but it's just painting. Oh, 1v1ing the roller, but very bad position to ledge. Yeah, fighting roller on the ledge is never something you want to do since the roller. Two is kills! Oh, nice sick jet from Dual Cop there. And it's just going to be the Tetra behind them. Will Incraft be able to get the Tetra behind? Oh, oh no. The Tetra gets one. And the Tetra is able to stall long enough for the rest of Starfall to give a really good job at the Tetra there. Being able to stall just long enough to get a wipe for Incraft. A wipe for stall Starfall to push up on. So yep. hopefully we can get good points out of this. Missiles come out forcing Stan to jump out. Starfall just going back to the same position, trying to go through the checkpoint and then get to second. But a ray comes out. Their armor is down, so the only armor left is Hydra, which also goes down at the moment. You see a 1v1 between, uh... Oh! That's a full wipe for Starfall now. So, Incraft Cult definitely needs to make use of this and push up. They need to get specials, too. Yeah. They get a, we see an Inkjet come out. That might give them the first checkpoint. Oh, but... two down. Really good job by Starfall, making sure they all get into that key area, that top right area for them and holding it to make sure that Incraft Colt cannot get anything out there can to push. Yeah, but Starfall's just patient here. Every time they just wait for the specials and then push up. That's all they need to do. At the moment, they're just pushing tower. Yeah, the speed break making it really hard to push. Same with the roller. Able Getting a to... double with the splashdown. Yeah, the roller does go down though, so it's going to be a 2v2 here. Sebastian able to punish the person riding tower, so it's just gonna be that custom jet holding the top left area. Try oh nice job killing that custom jet. Flank so, on the side oh, of the oh, oh. Yeah, that roller is not gonna be game, able to get anything off against the armor. Pink trying to take the tower, but they cannot stall it out. So that's gonna be game one for Starfall. Yep. It was an interesting I, side on uh like for the comps for Incraft Cult, but it just didn't do well compared to the Hydra. The Hydra kind of locked them out the whole yeah. game. I think both of these teams have like perfectly fine comps, but like Incraft Cult unfortunately doesn't really have any easy way to deal with Tetris here since mm -hmm. like the only I would say all of their weapons are pretty much losing to Tetris since it outranges all of their frontliners, and then Custom Jet has a tough time tracking and burst bombing the Tetras. Right, yeah. Especially since the Tetras can just move around a lot between the, the stacks and mid. I mean, you, you said that Custom Jet can track the Tetras, but... It's I very don't... hard for them to do it, though. Right, right, yeah. exactly. And with the Tetras just unchecked, they can just roll around and get kills. Yeah. But now, but now we're moving to uh, Zone Skipper. I think we might see the Hydra again on the side mm -hmm. of uh, Starfall. But Yeah, I, I think both teams' backlines can work here really well since, like, um, Hydra has a lot of good spots that can watch over a lot of the map here on both bottom and top, and since this map is pretty linear and all things considered pretty flat, Stingray is really good here. So I think both of these teams' cops can still work. I think Tetris might, it might be a bit difficult for Tetris to work here, since this map can be very narrow, though. Hmm. Same thing goes for Roller. I mean, Roller has very good Sharks uh, positions all over Skipper, but at the same time, it's not that great for Painting Zone. Yeah, <laughs> similar case with Tetris there, so I think that like, um, I, the roller, no, the roller player is still in for Incraft Cult, I'm trying to figure out, they subbed out someone, but I believe they I subbed out their top player. Yep. So yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Starfall is going to stick with their same roster for this game, so I'm wondering if like either team will have any comp changes. I'm assuming that uh, Incraft Colt will, since they changed the whole player. <laughs> yeah, Pink, which was uh, their NZAP player last round, waiting till the last second to choose a weapon, so maybe they moved off of NZAP, which I don't know, it zones. NZAP's 
<laughs> Maybe they just have like 50 different end set builds they have. Right, I mean, I have 50 different end set builds. So. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a tent. I am so happy to see a tent because I play tent. Sorel tent, yes, that's that, that, I love Sorel tent. <laughs> Well, like, K-Shot is, is so, going to be like early armors, but... And Boo is also super interesting to be here, but like, Bubbles and Fizzy Bob are super powerful here. Mm. Oh, two down on the side of Starfall already, and Incap Cole is going to get this out really early. So, yeah. I am really happy to see Sorel Tent here, because it is like, easily the strongest tent on this map, because Curling Rush is, is just perfect for this zone. Right. It's super flat, super open. And, um, Curly Bob's basic, and it's super long, so you can Curly Rush from either bottom or top, and your Curly to cover the whole zone. Int interesting thing here is that Inkcraft actually decided to go with no armor. Yeah, I, that's super interesting. It's a cop with, like, double fighter shots. Yep. Missile and, uh, and Jet, so, uh, they lost the zone. No, they still have the zone, actually. It's just the bamboos of kind of just keeping the Tetris in at bay. Who yeah. gets the double and Incraft Cole is going to hold on to the zone? They do have bubbles ready and merely missiles, so they definitely could hold this for quite a while. However, the Tetris is going to get splashed out, which can shred bubbles. But <laughs> nice trade by the T-Tech on the Tetris, making sure they can't get any more picks off on them. Yeah. Oh, and Sorry. the Tetris is going to block off Starfall from moving up further. Starfall getting their first special, are they going to use it? They might cap it with, uh... Bubbles go in, try to block off Starfall further. However, the Tetris is... Oh, oh nice oh, pick by the fifth. Oh, barely stopping the Tetris from getting up. And then the ten seconds. Up early, try to hold on to the zone and push Starfall out the bottom. And that is... Probably going to be a win for Incraft Bolt. They have to... Yep. Wow. Completely different. Uh... Yeah, that was... Wow. We, uh, we just saw two completely different games, like, I mean, the comps shifted so much in between games, but we just saw Starfall taking, being impressive on all sides when it came to uh, Mako, but over here, Incraft Cult fell at home. Yeah, I feel like Ted and Bamboo helped a lot with Tetris since, like, because for Bamboo, since Tetris ends up going in enemy ink a lot because it's just constantly rolling around, Bamboo can get a lot of one-shots on Tetris. And Tetris doesn't have much they can do against Ted Shield, and Ted is really good at punishing their rolls. So I think their comp helped a lot against the Tetra player on Starfall there. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if they are going with a similar comp for Game 3 or decide to change things up because it works so well in Game 2. I mean, they haven't swapped players yet, so... Yeah. I bet you'd I'm... be willing to see another tent, <laughs> despite it being Raymaker. Yeah, I, I, I am not a huge tent on Raymaker fan as a tent player. I think it can work on this map, but the issue is it's a pretty slow weapon, and, like, Raymaker pushes are, like, so fast, it's crazy. So... Mm. However, that being said, Ted can get a lot of things off by spamming shields on defense, using hammer to shark people, and shield pushes are like often some of the most safe pushes in Raymaker overall. I wonder if Incraft Cult is going to continue with this no armor list, I mean like no armor comp, uh, and if uh, Starfall is going to go back to Hydra despite it being Raymaker. I mean, I've seen a lot of Hydra on Raymaker. It's uh, a little, I, a little I weird, but I agree with Hydra on Rainmaker. Right? Yeah, I don't agree with it either. But if we're gonna, if they do go to on Rainmaker, and then we have a Hydra on Rainmaker, I guess they're both equally as slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like we might see a custom jet here again from the side of Incraft Cult. Like, well, the C jet wasn't able to win that first game for Incraft Cult. They were able to get a lot of really good defensive arrays that made that super low scoring game overall. So just, Blue Gloves, yep. wow, what an interesting pick. I actually really like Luka's end set because armor ink jet synergy is super good, and uh, having a midline weapon is really nice with Ted because it works really well off the shield. But yeah, we're going to see the Googas just pre preemptively buy their street there, making sure it's a little harder for Starfall to push in if they do. 
It's gonna be two guys for each rep hold initially. Yeah. They're taking like 3v1s, 3v2s. Uh, uh, yeah, really good team play from the fights in Starfall. However, Incredible is to strategically back up, make, make the hold what they can. Spin Break does come out. Soko is going to have to dodge this, and they are not able to. However, they do punish Pink rushing in mid. And something else I noticed that's interesting ball point on the side of Starfall, that is something I don't really see much in Rainmaker. I mean, it's a very fast weapon. I mean, you can yeah. see it straight at the moment. While, but yeah, I can tell Tag running a ton of warp speed. <laughs> <laughs> Just moving around the wall when there's no paint under him too, so it's like definitely fast. Uh, Scalp right here, trying to. I mean, he already has Ray. He's just waiting to get a good Ray position in order to take oh, the Rainmaker. Really unfortunate that Ted didn't punish that splash down there with the hammer. But Ted is going to get back really fast because quick respawn. So, Inkcraft Colt is going to try to push Rainmaker back with Ray and Inkjet. They aren't able to kill the Rainmaker, but Rainmaker is back way up. Like, no points have been scored so far. It seems we have another super defense hit. Oh, nice flip by the top. Wow. We're gonna try to pick the people off with the hammer, pushing into that flat area. Get, yeah, yeah they clear out the flat, but they're not able to get picked. And Incredible quickly gets the lead. They get all the way into the street. They're gonna, let's see if they can get, yeah, they're able to drop it all the way to 29. And 29. They get a repop here in a 2v2. Inkjet comes out trying to pop the Rainmaker. And they're gonna take it three to more points all the way to 23. We see a DC actually on the side of a. Uh, oh, that's uh, Starfall. But it's too so late now. It, yeah, it's past 50, so Starfall has to keep playing. Dang. I feel really bad for Starfall here because, like, that DC comes at the worst time immediately after Incraft Bolt gets their push past 50, and I think they're gonna knock out here. Yeah. Not much yeah. you can do in this position. Incraft Cole has a pretty good game. I think one of the downfalls of Starfall was that they didn't have a definitive push with the Rainmaker. Every time they held it, they had it in mid. They didn't really they went into street one time, right? But the other time, they just kept it in mid for some reason. Yeah, I think something that Incraft Colt did that really helped uh, prevent Starfall from having that definitive push you talked about is making sure that uh, whenever they were under pressure, instead of just like, instead of just like trying to sneak in a pick in a 2v4, which is never going to happen, they always backed up. Yeah. Like, but knowing it, when to back up in a losing fight is a super important skill that Incredible did a really good job there with. Yeah. Unfortunate DC on the side of Starfall, but this game goes to Incraft Colt. Yeah. So, in a minute, we're going to uh, turn over the mic to new commentators, but first, here are some cool tournaments and stuff by other people in the community that you should go check out. So, first off, we have Splat One Sunday. Ready for a throwback? Introducing Splat One Sunday. Splat One Sunday is a one-off Splatoon 1 event that'll happen on July 11th at 10 a.m. PDT or 1 p.m. EDT. It's being hosted by Chara and select members from IPL staff, and it's going to be a Swiss to single limb tournament on Splatoon 1 for the Wii U. So dust off your old console and get to gaming, and you can join their Discord at discord.io slash splat1 splat uh, hyphen one hyphen Sunday for more information. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, hyphens are important. <laughs> uh, uh, are you an artist? If you're an artist, then you're a VIP in the Shinex Challenge Tournament. The tournament requires each team to have one artist. That said, uh, one artist is also required to be playing the whole tournament. So if you are free on Saturday, July 3rd, first 1 p.m. EST, then you are in luck because that's when the tournament will be held. Check out at uh, discord.io.shinx for more information. P.S. Top 4 gets an art prize and first gets a $200 prize. Not bad. Speaking of $200 prizes, we have another $200 prize tournament tonight with Aquatic Cup Pride Edition happening a few hours after Loic tonight. 
They've been sponsored this month by the Dream Hat Community Clash, and they have a prize pool of $200. Along with their standard counterpick only Turf War tournament, they also they'll hope to see you at 8 p.m. EDT tonight. So yeah. And right. you can find their link at discord.io slash aquatic cup. Awesome. Now me and Turtle will be signing off. Uh, make sure to... Wait, one more thing. One more thing. Oh. One more? Yeah, there's one more. There is? Yeah. Oh, staff applications. Ink Performance Lab still has staff applications. We are always looking for additions to our production and commentary teams, as well as tournament staff. If you're interested in helping out in these areas, please fill out the form. If you're interested in more than one area, you may fi uh, fill out the form multiple times. Yeah, and here is the link for y'all who want to do that. Yeah, so that will conclude our time on low -A commentary. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us. In a minute, we're going to turn off the... We're going to turn the comms over to Chider and Quark, but there's still a lot of low ink action, so stay tuned. Uh, if you want to find more stuff from me, uh, you can check out my Twitter at TentTurtle, no spaces. Uh, you, you, you can see me talk about Tent Umbrella uh, and other stuff. I don't know what else I do there, but I like Tent Umbrella. If you like Tent, <laughs> you should call me. Yeah. Uh, thank you for having me. This was the first low ink I've ever commentated in, and I really had a lot of fun here with Turtle. Uh, you can follow me at uh, at Stream Delta for it's my Twitter account. I'm just a support player with. <sighs> you can call me the most cracked, crapid, you know, it, on, on Red sure. Sun. I don't know. Yeah, sure. But uh, thank you for having me, and we'll be signing off now. Yeah, we'll see you guys soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Low Ink day number one. We are in round four of the Swiss section of this tournament and I am Cater and I am joined here today by Cork. Yes, and today we are going to be seeing Unlimited Boomy United, or Uwu, against <laughs> Tenta Shrimp Talker. You just who wanted to like have an excuse movie. to Uwu on stream. I mean, who needs an excuse to Uwu on stream? I probably would anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you could just say uwu whenever you wanted. But yes, these are the teams that we are going to be seeing. And first off, we have Clam Blitz on Humpback Pump Track, which, seen this map mode a couple of times, and it always turns out to be quite interesting, I would say. Yes, it is. Uh, it's an interesting map because it's like, it's a very short distance, really, between the baskets. Yeah. So if you've got to push, that's useful. But it's also pretty difficult to push because there's. Either you have to go the really long way around and then get forced into a choke point, or you have to go straight through and um, also get stuck in a very big choke point. Any thoughts <laughs> on comps? I don't know much about these teams, but we can probably guess some weapons. True. I mean, honestly, I really like seeing bubbles in humpback, uh, not in in clan blitz in general. Excuse me, but. Having the sort of cover, like you were saying, both both routes, it's kind of hard to push on, and having those bubbles or something similar as a shield to tank damage is really, really nice, as well as popping them to clear out the area. I've seen great pushes make use of lots of different specials, but especially bubbles on this map. Also, Booyah Bomb, because it's Humpback Pop. Oh, yeah, it's it is. It soon, is. So I don't think we'll see the death return of the arrow PG, but, um, <laughs> yeah. I, as I, mean, I know, I always cheer for Aeros Raisin. It's always possible, it's always possible, it. but... <laughs> Definitely, I think I, w I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a Try or a Soda or a yeah, Slusher yeah. or something. Or maybe a Slusher Deco for the Baller. But because Buckets are good in the stage, as are Rollers, like... As you mentioned, someone could pull out, like, a Kensa Splat Roller, because that has Bubbles, like you mentioned. Hmm, that's true, yeah. I've seen Dynamos do really well here on Zones, not sure, not too sure about Clams, that is a little bit of a, a slower weapon and might not be able to keep up with pushes as much, but it's another one of those uh, weapons that can be pretty interesting when pulled out. And there's the Tri Sloshers, as predicted. Hey! We've got a Dynamo, that's another good choice, I, it's gonna help a lot of the area control. I yeah. think the Gloob is a definitely interesting pick. I think the Ball out of the Walls could help block control. Yeah, yeah. Pushing. A real, really nice pick there. And then the Vanilla Jet Squelcher, which um, I guess uh, Mist and Missile is going to be really nice for keeping enemies unaware. And there we go, first pick of the game already. Two down, um, already on uh, Tenta Shrimp. So we're, uh, we have specials being popped. The Missiles here, using them to scout as well. Nice job with Cat on the V-Jet there. As bubbles are coming out, rain's coming out, and right now it's just a struggle for mid. I mean, neither team has too many clams yet. Yes, the, it looks like Tether Shrimp Talkdales is getting a map control back. They've got Pit going off on either side. Dynamo, though, is reasserting control. The armor's coming out for Tether Shrimp Talkdales. It's more or less a mid fight now, and Unlimited Wounded United wasn't able to calculate in the early two down. Mm -hmm. And the clam advantage is very much in the favor of Ulu and Lulu United. That's another two down for them as well. They've got a move and they've got an opening. They got the ball already. They got the armor coming up. They're gonna get a push here. And they do take out the tri slasher, clearly by getting both clams in and getting even more. And it's already kicking back past under 50, coming out under 40 soon. So it looks like the members of Tender Ship Cocktails are coming in, cleaning it up, taking two down. In spite two more specials coming out, that is gonna be appear to be enough to stop the push at 45. That still is an excellent push for less than two minutes into the game. Yeah, you saw Uwu's try get a little bit cornered there. <laughs> Run down by three members of Tentatrip, unfortunately wasn't able to escape. Still though, like you were saying, try is really nice on this map. And uh, also having that armor. Actually, the double armor comp coming out of Uwu. I just noticed that with the gold dino and the try as well. Unfortunately, they're two dead right now, and with 21 clams on the side of Tenta Shrimp, they're gonna be trying for a push there. As the V Jet just not really able to do much right there. Even though the power clam misses, they're gonna pick it up again and get, have another chance. And this is their chance at a big push to hopefully tie up the lead, get the lead for themselves. Unfortunately, they've gone two down though, and even though they have a lot of clams, Uwu's just hopped right back in, quickly taking control of the area underneath their base, and already. <laughs> Again, these glue goes out here in mid and being so aggressive with their position. Yeah, and you saw that counter push that when when Umumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumumum
But they're throwing it, they're passing it. Almost. I was expecting them to take the other pass, but looks like they're just kind of trying to look around, pass the missiles, not quite moved yet. Though, by doing so, they give themselves more specials, but they also give time for tentacle for unlimited, unlimited Wumi Yune, that's a tongue twister, why? Um, to get the lead, but they do get the lead! The bubble's doing their job, letting the Nuffclums get in, the jump gets out, and that's the lead for Tentacrip Cocktails, taking it back with just under two minutes left to go. Yeah, two minutes left to go, like you said, we've got two specials online as well for Uwu, I mean, even, uh, they are very well equipped to both either defend or go on the offense, but of course, as they have lost the lead, they are going to be looking for more clams now. They don't really have a clam advantage. I mean, it's pretty even on both teams right now, and again, it's just this fight for mid returning that we've seen both teams uh, go on through most of the match. You see that those glugas with those ballers and the, <laughs> the try as well coming up to get a pick. And there's many clams underneath right now who's looking for a push, but their try gets taken out, and that's an unfortunate pick on their end. Yeah, I don't think the try had as much space as they thought they did, so they wouldn't have tried to grab all the clams, but they really just got mowed down. You see the rain coming out. And then I'm surprised some of the Wumi United managed to get out of that corner. You saw two of them get shoved in, and they didn't all die there, which is pretty impressive, really. They got the armor coming out, they got the missiles coming out. They do get a pick on Tetrisrip Cocktails. And they do have an opening right now with two going down. The Tetris Ship Cocktails is gonna... That's three down, but they've got the bubbles ready. The Junior can get something, but the Junior's in the wrong place. The Power Club's above them, and they can't get back up there. So that's gonna be a Power Club in for Unlimited Reunited, but they still need to get more Clems, and they got one more coming in now. And they do get the lead again. Trade, a nice trade, or a nice trade coming, almost a trade coming out here. And we see the nice Excal's looking for something, can't really get anything, trying to push up on the C-Jet, the V-Jet, and get some picks. And really, it's a fight in mid now, but Tentership Cocktails is the ones who needs to move, because yeah. they can that. Yeah, it is all up to them right now. I mean, they can get they, they get the power in and a couple more small clams that will get them the lead. So it is not too big a lead that they have, that they have... I mean, they have eight seconds, they have a little bit of overtime left, but they are one down. That Keisha has only just respawned, and whoever's carrying the power clam really just has to move right now. The Dynamo's already on defense up here in the middle of the... They, they do not miss! They get the power clam in, but they're oh, too the down now. Missed. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay. And bam, like the Dynamo missed go. the flick, and the, the person going to the bubbles missed dodge that. And that's going to be the win for Tentatrip Cocktails, because you saw at the end, Uwu was down at the end, they didn't quite have members coming back in yet, they didn't have that... They have the dynamo, but they didn't have the V-Jet to use the mist, which would have really helped slowing their opponents down, and... They do... lose that, barely. So that was a lot of armors that came out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what, what you got armor with spam. a double armor comp and... It's just armor spam on both sides. It's a lot, but hey, that's what, that's what armor's for, right? <laughs> Oh, it's tacos, not cocktails. How did I confuse myself? Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Understandable, people. have a nice day. We're gonna be moving cocktails, on to- Cocktails, taco, taco, cocktails. Can I choose- Please, these? no, that's a, an abomination. That We're gonna be moving on to- dogs? There's there's no way that's a real thing. I... <laughs> we are moving on to Tower Control right on now. Wahoo World for our next map mode. <laughs> no, um, they are a thing. I just- I looked it up and there's a recipe on for it. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going back to Tower Control and Walker. We're not talking about taco cocktails. Um, this is a map that it's going to be very hard for both sides to push. It tends to be pretty low scoring just because of how hard it is to get through that first section. Yeah, but after that first section, after the really the second checkpoint, it all just barrels on for there. Similar to other maps like. Eh. Well, you got Sturgeon, you got Inkblot, all the maps that tend to snowball after that second checkpoint. Uh, especially first checkpoint's with. That's gonna be. That's really true, yeah. Like, especially with hard, that path over the water. The first one here. Because you're get. Because the way you, the first checkpoint's surrounded on, on three sides by vertical areas, which your opponents can take control of. Or you can take control, but your opponents can easily push into as well. And then a big wide open area for, say, like a sniper to fire through. Yeah, I mean, if you end up moving just a bit too fast, sometimes you can get caught unawares by, like you said, enemies that are respawning or are just waiting for you there, and then bam, your push is over. It's just a matter of really coordinating with your teammates and knowing when and where to move. Because if you're a little bit behind or a little bit ahead, it can really, really make a huge difference. Yeah, and getting to that first part, like I said, it's going to be important that the team controls not only the left side, where they're going to be near the glass, where they're going to be probably concentrated, because that's where the tower goes through, but they're going to want to make sure they get that right path, provided the uh, platform is deployed, especially. Because if they can't control that, their opponents can use that to 
very effectively deny the first checkpoint by just standing there firing on tower, and it's not really a good angle to fire back from on tower. So it gets really hard, and then the bombs come out, and a push can be pretty easily denied. I'm right, interested to see what they did. See the double backline we too, seeing the C jet come out this time. Ooh, I guess we're gonna see some race spam and uh, we're gonna G2. see oh, some race spam, get it? <laughs> uh, oh no, yes, and an interesting pick of the K Junior. The, it's definitely a good pick because the bubbles are gonna be really helpful as shields and mm -hmm. a nice change to the uh, charger. And the dynamo already getting a pick. Yeah, I mean, that Dynamo dropped, what, 13k last game? I and mean, they're on their A game today. And these Glugas, too. I mean, it's really nice to see a Gluga player, honestly. Glugas are one of my favorite weapons to watch, but they're just not played that often. So it's really nice to see Axiom here out on these K Glugas, uh, really moving down the other team. And already, like you said, on a limited Ruby United is going to be at that first checkpoint and falls with little resistance from Tentish Shrimp as the Charger up here is painting for Stingray. They've almost got it, so hopefully they can do something with it immediately popping it and there you go the bubbles coming out as well to hopefully shut down their push they uh unloaded unloaded woman united you weren't wrong about that being a tongue twister did armor over that and so did not take uh, too much damage how uh, however that did stall the push a little bit and give tentrish a little bit of more time to recover like you said about glue it's just so satisfying watching them like oh the my god yeah look another another pick <laughs> but they, it looks like they're finally gonna get blown up by all those projectiles so uh, this time they switched to the Kenta Glugas, which is going to be really useful for area control with those mm -hmm. bombs, those fizzy bombs, and also armor spam, because you can paint a lot with those fizzies, and mm, the double fair, armor yeah. I think is going to help, especially if they're a part, because that's going to let the Sea Jets Ray really be the only one that's as con yeah. that's con contesting, because double armor, you always probably have an armor, and that lets you just not get raid, and whereas... Yeah. Yeah, Tentative right. Trip does have an armor as well, but they only have one, and they have it from a slower weapon. Like, they don't have a Zapper Jr. or anything. So yeah. it's- and they're gonna get less rays themselves, so the Siege is gonna have the Stingray control. So yeah. the Charger- oh, they are getting the same- they've only got the same amount of rays. It doesn't look like the Siege is concentrating too much on the race spam just yet. And Tentative Trip looks like they're gonna be the person to make the move. One down on each side, but the rays coming out. Tentative Trip's holding their armor, I guess they're just trying to dodge the right. And they do have a member respawning. Whereas in, the CJ goes down to the side of Uhu, and this is Tether Ship's chance, but they really just need to move up, get the armor, and they need to clear this dynamo out, I'm sure. The torpedoes and the bombs are gonna come out, that should be enough to pull dynamo up. And the dynamo is getting fall off, to one, another member going down for Uhu, but a member went down for Tether Ship as well, their shot taking, this is just really hard to slip. And we see Gluga is trying to get a nice pick, shadowing the armor, they're getting forced back by the bubbles, the race coming out, and though, Tender Ship is one down, but they've got the right. They're gonna get the. Uh, I don't know. How is that the dynamo alive? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think. I, I think the Ray spammer got. They probably got sidetracked with something or other. Yeah, they but they I, I am. Up, I am like, very impressed by how long the dynamo stayed alive there. Oh, I mean, yeah, they camped the out. Got a they, double too. I saw two people go down right there. They camped. They, they, they camped out that that little pink wall for as long as they possibly could and then managed to jump out after basically staring down a stingray, which is very impressive. We, they're, they're doing a great job here. We're going to last minute and 45 seconds of this game, and like you were saying, I mean, this this map is generally low scoring like this. Neither team has even made it to the second checkpoint yet, although Uwu has certainly come close. However, this is Tentastrip's turn at a chance for a push. Inkjet and Bubbles coming out, jumps to the tower. That Inkjet looking for a pick on the dynamo, but not quite going to get it. However, they they do have armor, so they're not going to immediately die to them, and so it's just now a 1v1 T-Tech versus Dynamo. And finally they get shut down, but not before they get a pick on the tower as well. And although this check first checkpoint still falls, it is with much more resistance on the side of Ooh, Ooh, they they can take that Nice pick right there. They think oh, one point. one point! But they still got the member advantage! They can get this back! They just need to rush the tower! And it's 2-1, they just need to hold on, just hold on. They get it! They get the lead! They managed to arm over the dynamo, and now they can extend it a little further, getting to the second checkpoint. And like we saw, most of the match was a stalemate, but now... <laughs> the and there's a rick roll! Yeah, the oh, dynamo yeah. did not uh, let us down in the, getting that amazing kill there, if you will excuse yeah, me. And they're not going to give up, <laughs> despite all the ways they're getting bombs they're getting pressured with. If they absolutely gonna... will not. They will not um, run around and desert their team. But, but they, uh, uh, they will run away a little bit, though. But, en uh, enough of it that. Like they got... going for it. And, they've got uh, two special on their they're side. They're not saying goodbye to me just yet. And in fact, they get it back. 
Yes, they do, and they are extending as well, getting past that second checkpoint. We've got 15 seconds left to go, and I believe we saw a three down situation there for Uwu. This is going to be Tentatrin's last chance. They've got the bubbles on the side of the K Jr., but not much else as the rest of the members are frantically painting for special. I mean, Jr. is, of course, going to have special, but here we go into overtime, and the tower's not even in mid yet. I mean, there's quite a ways to go for Tentatrin right now. Uwu, however, is two members down, but the C Jet has that rate. That Nutty Sex is going to need to get armor soon so that they can armor over and it looks like that's exactly what they did. Inkjet coming out here, nicely coordinated specials, but um, the Charger finally going down. However, the members of Tentership are still rushing it, but Glug is in here with a nice pick and just hopping on the tower to end that overtime dream for them. Yeah, it looks like at the end, though, all the members were standing on tower, which, if you're going through a checkpoint, it goes faster, but I don't think it's Splatoon 2. I think it's like in Splatoon 1 that more players in tower the faster it moved. It only recall, plays for it's, checkpoints. A, it's a very small so. difference, not enough to make really much of a difference. Yeah, so it would have been, be yeah, been better for them to put, have some of the, say their chargers stay on the tower and have the other members move up a bit faster. And that inkjet probably could have been a bit more aggressively positioned as well. So you saw they were kind of far away, just kind of firing the space, but if they had launched a little closer to the enemy, they could have done so much more damage. Mm, yeah. That's going to be tied at one, I believe, for the set. Um, I haven't been keeping yes. track of you. Uh, yeah, tend to trip on the first last one. All right, <laughs> okay. We're moving on Two. to our last game of the round, which is going to be Splat Zones on Albacore. And I like this, but of course you know why I like this. I am an anchor player, and uh, long ranges to Albacore is... I don't know, I didn't have an analogy for people for this. Uh, sharking rollers is to, uh, corners in Wall High Warehouse. Or, uh, here, I have long ranges to Albacore as tri slashers are the humpback. How about that? That's true. And all, but black belly as well. That, that's true, <laughs> tri yeah. Tri-slashers yeah. the litter anywhere there's a curved surface, to be fair. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what I, really what I was trying to say is with that is that Albacore favors long range and high mobility, so if you have something like a ballpoint, something like a brush, spotlings that are already running obscene amounts of your run speed up, you've got the ability to move around on these grates faster, easier than other weapons who might just be at a loss having to walk around. Yeah, I think the double, if Uhu keeps running a double back on comp, it's gonna be incredibly strong here. Because we saw what that V Jet could probably do, or could do. They could probably do the same thing here. Especially if they pull out the Mist again, that's gonna really help in controlling the Greats. And then Dynamo is just so good at controlling the zone. I mean, yeah, yeah, you're right. There's just a lot that can happen on this. And really, I mean, that double backlight cop has been serving Uwu pretty well with all the armors. Hopefully they'll be able to stay in the zone a little bit longer as well. I mean, it's just with splat zones, you're always wanting, you're always wanting to look for the lockout. I've seen some really fast games on here where <laughs> the team has just taken zone, pushed up all the way to the other teams basically underneath their spawn and then spawn camp them for the rest of the match. I mean, with how these have gone, I doubt that what is going to happen, but that's, that's the ideal, you know? And then you saw how fast Uwu came out to be in the first uh, this last game. If they manage to do the same thing here, that could be really powerful. And if they Ooh, just comp out. swaps! Yeah, it looks like Uwu is or Uwu is continuing with the double backline, but they're pulling out a sploosh or a splash and a CDS, which is going to help a lot. We got a lot more control coming out from the CDS range and mobility, like you said, and then just the bomb rushes and the paint from the splash and the sheer aggro. Whereas on Tentatrip. I've got a CJ, which is going to be good for raying, combating that double backline because of how long, if you ray the long way on Albacore, it's really strong. And we got the Ravi Jr. for armor, and then they've got the Gal coming out, which is going to be able to put a lot of pain out and also do a lot of damage and get those Booyahs. But right now, Tetraship is going, well, they're actually running double Booyahs, so they're going to be put a lot of Booyahs down. And there's the first Booyah of the game coming out. And the Gal going for another pick, getting that pick on the CDS, that's going to be important. Denying, letting them push up. And the one jump coming out looks like that was the Dynamo getting out of there before they got shot to death. And now they're already back in the game. They got the armor coming out. They're getting I'll some nice chip damage on the Gal. And they did look to keep it out. And that's going to look like it's going to flip back the zone for Ubu. 
Yeah, three down on the side of Tentashroom right now as Uwu is nicely back in control. You saw they all, they popped three of their specials at the same time to get in. We didn't see all of them exactly on screen, but you could see on the top bar they all had special and they all popped them at the same time. Very nice coordination out of them there as they now have control of mid. They're capitalizing on it and they have the lead. The dinos. Oh, they get stuck right there between a rock and a hard place. The bomb and the other bomb, unfortunately, are taken out there with two down on the side of Uwu. Zone's gonna flip back to Tenta Shrimp. That Ray assisting them from the siege as well. And so the I mean Junior's doing what Junior does, inking up, getting armors. But the <laughs> that's a very Bob nice pick. I'm not sure. I think it's a nice pick. Oh, but they go down with the dynamo. Oh, they're using their vertical flicks really well. I don't see that too often. Usually I see people get mm. crushed horizontally. Yeah. This dynamo is sniping with those vertical flicks that I mean. It can work yeah. because outrage some actual snipers. <laughs> That's true, they've only been playing Dynamo this whole set, but that is not a problem as you've been seeing. As we've we've all been seeing, they're they've been doing amazingly well for their team. Great plays here. And now Uwu's gonna be pushing up as well. Just a little bit, taking control of this bridge. They're unfortunately forced to back off with another blue bomb. They're just gonna get right back at it, using those flicks to go over the walls and getting that pick. Very nice job out of them. They looks like they know the weapon inside and out. Meanwhile, their team is already in the low 30s, and they're gonna get past that. As Tenta Shrimp is still mostly struggling to get back in, so that Junior has gone down, so there's no armor for them, and they're not going to have that advantage once they're trying to push back in. They're likely going to have to wait for that, but they don't have any time to wait. The CJ has pulled out their ray right now. But that's not going to put a lot of paint down, thankfully. Their teammates are able to go in and capitalize on that, neutralize the zone, and they are painting for their life right now, able to stop that right at 7 and get themselves a little bit more time in breathing. Yeah, the Libria Bomb is cancelled, and Uwu is going to get the zone right back, but it's going to go back to Tether Trip as well, and looks like we're going to have a bit of a stalemate. Uwu is, has the numbers advantage, but is going to be pushed back. The CJ, the VJ rather, firing, and it looks like there's going to be a bit of a sandwich on the bridge here. There's one member of both sides. And each team going down, and the zone is going to flip back for Tenta Shrimp. And I'd like to point out about the Dynamo you mentioned there. Not only the like the weapon mechanics are really good, but also their movement is just scary. I don't know how they they can move in. So, they were moving in such little ink, like earlier when we saw them dodge those uh, rays. That they're just really good at swimming too. <laughs> That's what the sub strafing is for, but anyways, we've got the rain at the ready for the CDS and there it goes into the zone uh, Mirrored by the Booyah Bomb on the other side, the zone's gonna flip back to Tenta Shrimp right now as we see two down on Uwu forcing the CDS to back off just a little bit with their teammate there I mean, uh, now we're just seeing the control getting taken off. That Booyah Bomb is thrown so far back. Looks like it got uh, assisted in a pick of some sort as well, which is very, very nice. Great use of the splash wall here by the KL in order to shield some damage and prevent them from dying right now. And already we are down to 36 for Tenta Shrimp. And this game is not over yet because two down on Uwu means that it's all up to the Vita to paint the zone. And although Jet's got good paint, it can't do it all on its own. And unfortunately, they are just taken out by the KGAL, who is now pushing up. Very nice aggression for them. Getting the rays coming out of the team, and it was a bit cluttered, and that's almost certainly going to be the lead. The Gal getting another nice pick, they did a great job controlling the bridge of the wall. The bomb rush is coming out, but it's far too late, and that's going to be the game for Tenta Shrimp. Right at the last second with the incredible comeback. I'm I mean, surprised they managed yeah. to get that stop earlier, but they came all the way back, and they come back to win this set in a very intense and decisive game three. I mean, yeah, that's that, that's how you save a Splat Zones game right there. And look at the armors coming out of the Junior, eight of them. I mean, just impressive by the special spam every time, even though I know that's what the Junior is made for. But like you were saying, really, really nice stop, take back, and then just doing exactly what they needed to do to take that game and take the set. Yes, and like I said, Dynamo was great. I really like the double backline style that... Ubu is using it, gave them so much control, I think. Despite the fact that Tendership had a bit more of a aggro comp, they just kept running into the wall that was that dynamo and that jet. Yeah, I mean, double backline played like that, it, it, the sheer range and turf power that they those two weapons can put out when they work together very well is amazing, and it really stops uh, weapons it just stops weapons, like you said, it's basically a wall, and they use that to their full advantage. Alright, we're going to be taking... Yeah, I'll take a break of a couple of minutes before our next set, so we will be right back and do stay tuned.
it into V. Flat with yet another ink jet. You know, with that 170B ink jet, V Splash gets it really quickly. And that combination of the ink jet and the mist is a really nice thing for Splash to have. Um, we're seeing actually the Keg out there and a little bit of a flank, but they just. Oh, they get knocked off the. They get knocked off by the wall! That was That's kind of bad. Oh my god, what's going on? There's no bombs in the lead! We need to go now! Only 1.3, but they stop it! It's 44! No! No, 1.3! It goes to 43, but Night Sun is out there like Conqueror, and they stop that push! It's not wow. happening! One seconds left! It's not happening! Somehow, through four specials! Two Angels finally goes down, but sucks a lot of attention over there, and you see Oliver kind of cleaning up. So two players go down for the Angels, and they recognize that. And here they go, grabbing the Rainmaker, trying to get across this bridge. Can they? And they do, and they are going to not get. What is this game? Come on! Honestly, something that might have saved Night Surfing for at least a little bit longer. And now Noodles bullying the kid into the corner, and this is where things are starting to get a lot out of control with three players going down this could be your tournament right here alex slams it oh. down night surfing has won low ink april 2021 
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Low Ink Day One. We are in round five of our Swish portion. Swiss? I didn't say that right. If you are just joining us now, I am Cater, and I am joined here today by Cork. Yes, hello, and we are going to be seeing Intimidation Factor versus Power Ink! Exclamation mark. And we are going to be starting off on Rainmaker on Snapper Canal. Any thoughts? I swear to God, every single tournament I commentate, I commentate either this or Snapper Clams. Why? Why is this so common? Why do people like Snapper Canal so much? What is the Snapper charm in this? Our, our what is the night, charm right? in this? This embodiment of mediocrity that people like wow. so much. Damn, those what? are harsh words. But you're not wrong. <laughs> Snapper Canal Rainmaker is the equivalent of a, of a participation trophy of a stage, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of with you there. It's a bit annoying. It, it, honestly, Snapper is a bit of an annoying map because of the giant water feature between anywhere you can go. Though, I'm sure the real reason everyone likes it is because they just really like the arch bridge over it. I mean, it is a nice bridge, so... That's true, it is quite quite, quite a nice bridge, and there was those... There used to be those glitches, I don't know if they've been patched, where you can uh, go up onto the bridge, so... It, it's nice for sightseeing, but... Man, the gameplay on here is... I mean, it gets a bit stale when you commentate it and you know every single tournament that you watch. I'm just hoping for a, a Tentabrella, okay? I'm just hoping for a Tentabrella. Yeah, Tetra Brawls are fun and really good pick on this map as well. No tent. No, oh, we got Tetras though. We got a Charger. You see me rolling. <laughs> we got pretty, pretty orthodox cops here. We got the Dark Tetras coming out the Sea Jet on uh, one side, the Slatter Scope on the other. Both teams are gonna have Rays now, so um, backlines and Rays. Not too out of the ordinary for Rainmaker, and already the Zap. Um, on the side of Intimidation going down. That's an early pick two down now. And so this hopefully can evolve into an early push for Power Inc. Yeah, they definitely do a good job pushing out the Nazi, a really good job pressuring them. We have the Bomb Rush getting ready to come out, the, the, the counter raise up, and that's gonna take down the Rainmaker, though they get the 46, that's a pretty good push, especially Ooh. if they can just... It looks like they got killed by the blue up somehow on the Rainmaker. So it's gonna be three down on the side of Power Inc, and the Nazi's gonna run away because they know they can't take a three or four v one. Yeah, it's they gonna have... be an immediate counter push for Intimidation Factor. They're getting a nice pick of the Nautil, the Rainmaker. Ooh, they're going the other way too. I was gonna say that not has an inkjet for when their teammates get back, but unfortunately that just did not happen. However, you see a member of Power Rangers just rushing down the Rainmaker. Really nice job of the splash there. Unfortunately, they do die, but they manage to take out the Rainmaker, which is the most important thing. However, that Knot's gonna be the only one left alive again, so this is just uh, open air for Intimidation to continue their push, and with two teammates jumping to the Rainmaker, they could very easily take the lead there. They just swim. Ooh, they just the Ooh, nice dodge, and they're gonna take the lead right here, already up to 30. One before they get taken out by well the very not that was still left alive assisted another pick and that's three down for intimidation now they did get a very nice counter push off of that the nice opp opportunistic uh, movement from them and it's been a pretty fast paced game so far we're only we're only one minute and thirty seconds into it yeah really high scoring for the first very soon to, very beginning of the match and we see the ancient coming out they got the stingray ready they've got the Bomb rush ready, but they need to not die to the auto bomb for right there. And there is the oh, double right. And then the raid comes out the bomb, so that's two members of it part going down. The Tetra is going in for a pick, not getting it. But that's two, it's a 2v2 situation. And Power does look like they they got the pop. They could continue to push, but that Siege is getting a lot of control. The back lines aren't there yet for Power so they're gonna have to buy their time. They have a member go down, it's a 3v4 situation. Member going down for the side of Intimidation Factor. The Tetra is looking for something, not gonna get it quite. I think we're just gonna shark here for a bit, trying to find something, throwing some auto bombs, going for a pick on the. I don't know if Jeff says this, which shooter that was. They're gonna go for the knot, they get the knot, they get shot in the back, and they take out the knot. Nice trade. It's really important, taking out one. Because they're gonna be a lot back a lot faster, or with no quick respawn doesn't cap effect, but they're gonna. I mean, they can just roll back in and take a lot more <laughs> dangerous jumps than the knot can, if they want. And we got the armor and the ray ready for the side of Power Rank, and they do have a chance to make a move with one member down. They've got those, the armor ready to deal with the enemy ray, but the Rainmaker won't be protected that, so they're gonna have to figure out a way to clear out that siege it before they make their move. So despite having all specials, it's only gonna take one to stop their push. Looks like they know that, but they're gonna opt for the, the push anyway, and there's that ray tried and true. It looks like the, it's gonna get taken out. Uh, yeah, the siege jet's dead now. Rainmaker getting to 45, but unfortunately they just uh, die in pretty much the same area. Nice splash, but 
the splash is sharking up here. They're going for a pick. They get one. Yeah, but unfortunately, they just get shot in the back. And so that's two down for Power Inc. as Intimidation is going to pick up the Rainmaker. And they're trying for another push, but not before they get shut down again. And it's just a, a bloodbath right now as people are falling left and right. Yeah, we see interesting in both teams. The Zaps are top fragging or tied for top fragging with the Intimidation Specters. Zap getting 8 and the Zap of the Power Egg getting 10, so I think Zap might be seeing support left, but it's also really good at killing people, and they're doing a really good job of taking killing people in this match. You also have a uh, funny armor assist, but that is true. Zap can oh, be played right, very. Assist, Slap, assist, Zap right. can be played very aggressively if you'd like to. No, your points still stand. But yeah, armor assist likely factor into that. Ray coming out of the charger here. Counter Ray coming out of the CJ. We see a Ray battle, but that CJ is taken out early. Ray. Yeah, unfortunately, the this junior manages to sneak up on the charger and take him out as well, too. Down on um, on Intimidation right now. So Power Rings got a little bit of an opening so that they can move forward, but not by much. As we go into the last 40 seconds of this match, they still have to do something, something, anything. They have the Rainmaker, they have that Bomber, but that's really all they have. And all it takes is a few seconds for that C-Jet to get that ready. Yeah, the city jet is uh, very quick. They did get that right. As we're saying that, they've got it ready. They've got the armor out. Tetra's going for a flank. Looks like they're gonna—they're not gonna quite find any of the members. But they do find the knot. That's two down on the side of our power rank, and that's gonna be three down. The charger's the only one left. They're not really gonna get anything. I highly think the bombs coming out of them. They're gonna rush because they're not giving up yet. But and they're going for a top shot kill. They get a top shot kill actually, and they're going. But they're, they're, they're gonna get held off. That's the miracle of rushing a desperation in the last few seconds of the game, unfortunately, like you said. With them being the only one alive, they just had no teammates to back them up. And so that is going to end in a win for Intimidation. Yes, and it was a pretty close match as we saw. Score close, the uh, KAs are within one of each other. <laughs> you nearly with identical. Power only getting one less. I think I didn't quite see the special counts, but those looks like they were pretty close as well. And both teams, I think we're going to see a really good fight here. Yeah, it looks like we've got two more quite evenly matched teams, which is what we love to see, honestly. <laughs> Great matches, put on a show. Really nice. We're going to be moving on to our next map of this set, which is going to be Clan Blitz on Wahoo World. So we're going back to Wahoo. Uh, we previously saw Wahoo Tower, now we're going to see Wahoo Clan, so a little bit different here. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a different situation, because Wahoo Tower, as we saw, it was pretty hard to push for most of the match. This map can be like that, but also, like, if the bridge is down and your opponents aren't quite paying attention, it's just a straight shot right through and you can dunk that climb pretty easily. Well, you yeah, might you die don't even once have you get to... the ground, but... If you, you don't jump, even have to so drop, there. I believe. You can just sit up there and throw in the climb. Yeah, but it's a... Some of us have trouble aiming. <laughs> so we end up <laughs> That is true, yeah. Uh, I can understand. I've missed more climbs than I can count on this map. And uh, other thing I'd like to note is that there's a lot of ways you can push this map. Because like you said, we can go straight through, you can go around, and you can also just go all the way around like you can on maps like uh, Humpback, like we saw earlier, and also Muscle Forge. When you're there, that's... It, it's... <laughs> if someone has a beacon, it gets it back there. A beacon, a super jump, something of the sort. It's really nice, especially if all the members of the opposing team are, well, in the wrong position and they can't do anything about it, and then you've just got some clans in. It's quite nice. Maybe even if you hide up on, if you manage to sneak up onto the bunker. I mean, like you said, there's a lot of area behind that basket for fights to play out as well. So if one of the teams manages to get up there, it can it can really spiral out of control. Yeah, so we're going in right now, and we should see what's going to bring out. I don't think we'll see too many cop changes, but I think it would be really good if the team brought a brush or something. And oh, Ooh, bamboo, no, bamboo coming out. And we see the looks like both teams are offering for opting for one long range weapon and then a whole bunch of just in your face point blank zaps coming out. The double armor staying. So I have intimidation factor, which is gonna work really well synergizing with those tetras. Because tetras you're gonna be able to do a lot more damage when they don't have to worry about dying quite as quickly. And yeah. armor already ready for the side of power rank. Yeah, I mean what we're 
15 seconds, 20 seconds in, and there's fast specials. That's what special spam and weapons do. And it looks like they're opting to hold it for a little bit. There we go, and finally it is popped, and the Zap has their armor as well, so whenever they need it, they can just pop it again. That's the beauty of double armor, and with two armor spamming weapons, no less. I mean, there, <laughs> unfortunately, the Junior's not able to escape that. We have, I mean, both teams collecting clams pretty quickly here, which is not always something you see in the beginning of the match. Sometimes teams just both struggle for control, but... Uh, we immediately see a power, not immediately, but a power clam going pretty quickly in for Intimidation, although they do die du during that, and with the Junior and the Bamboo the only ones left alive, it is unlikely that they're going to be able to follow up with anything else. Yeah, so we see both teams fighting for mid, though. Power does have the distinct advantage here, because they have one more member that we see the member of... The, the names, uh... Intimidation uh, factor? Intimidation factor, sorry, I, I just... Ooh, double! No, nice double coming out, both teams going two down, and the bomb rush coming out though, I'm not sure why they're doing that, because... They might have just been to stay alive, they're the only one left. Oh, I thought that was a charger who is not dead, but um... Anyway, the bomb rush coming out, staggering intimidation factor for a little bit, but... They're gonna go in, and they're gonna get mid back, but the charger's gonna push them immediately right back out, and one member of power is going to go down though. Nice! The amazing set, going for another one, they're going for Squirrel trying to, uh, hunt the Squirrel, I guess we, it's just like, uh... <laughs> Or are we like going hunting now? Because we got a bamboo, like there's like a hunting rifle a bit, and we've got a squirrel, full name squirrel. Anyway, we see a nice jump coming in. Tetra's taking a risky jump like they can. Both teams are full from something. Intimidation Factor does barely have the lead, but they don't have much of a lead, and if Power Rank can get themselves collected, they can definitely come back. Yeah, I mean, we're, in the last, we're, we're two minutes into the match right now, and although we've only had one clam score, both teams. Like you, like you were remarking on how well matched they are, just kind of been in a stalemate for a good chunk of this match. Both teams looking for a purchase, but not quite getting something. Very nice snipe coming out of the charger. Both chargers are really showing their stuff on stream today, and we've, we're actually seeing a little bit of a push up from Power Inc. right now. They've got a little bit more control, a bit more on their front foot. However, they don't have a power clamp, so they can't really push just yet. And with one of their, uh, with their armor weapon down the zap, they might want to wait a little bit on that. Yeah, we see that Junior going a really okay. nice one, bring a nice double there before they take it out. You saw how well they moved. And Slayer Junior. Pushed, but take it out as well. Yeah, Slayer Junior. We love Slayer Junior. Uh, Slayer weapons. Slayer weapons that don't look like Slayer weapons are the best kind. So almost getting missiles, but managing to find the one corner missiles aren't. Intonation Factor is starting to try to move up. They but they don't have the picks, and they only have one special that that splashdown, and they are going to go one down. The other side going one down as well, and. Both sides are still looking for purchase, not really getting anything. We see the stalemate for this most of this match, aside from that one score. It's charging a nice pick just as we flip the camera to them. Intimidation Factor, or Power Rank has another chance to move. The Intimidation, they still don't have a Power Clam, but well, they do have the PD Clam, but it's way back there. And there's the one member of Nine, I'm surprised they haven't passed them any Clams yet, I mean, they just don't want to get detected. And they're charging a nice pick, someone peeks a little too soon. Starting the armor of another, of the, well, I'm sure they're going to have it. Barrage coming out, and now Power Rank is making the move, and they could definitely take the lead here, looking how many clans they have. That's exactly what they're looking to do. Zap's gone down, but all they need is one more clan to take that lead, and there it is. <laughs> Finally, they're able to. Junior got some really nice movement here, strafing around this charger, using their bombs, using everything they can. They're camping that jump as well. A successful kill for them. They're still alive. See, over here, we have the charger getting a double before they get taken. Uh, was that charger? Yeah, that was a charger getting a double before they got taken out. And that was three down the set of power, but not before they got it down to 53, which might not sound like a lot, but, even, but we only have 44 seconds left in this match. And judging by the stalemate that we've seen in this, most of this match, like we were talking about, is going to take something huge for Intimidation Factor to break through the defense that Power Rank is likely to be setting up right about now. Yes, and Power Rank is doing a pretty good job keeping Intimidation Factor trapped into that charger, keeping the bamboo a bit pinned, forcing them to dodge around the burst off coming out as well. Though, we see a strong push coming in from the right side of the Intimidation Factor. The splashdown coming in didn't really get much, but the bamboo playing incredibly aggressively, taking one out, looking for another the Junior who was seeing to play so well getting picked. And now it's going to be really close. Oh, the chance is getting another, getting an S double. And this is going to be crucial. They're going to be... They can just throw the clay. The charger gets a double. Yeah, the, 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 they, had, they were forced to keep fighting and couldn't throw the clans in. So it looks like Power Rank is going to manage to take this in the last second. And it looks like we're going to see another match. One, we, one, saw, we saw two crucial doubles there, first from the Tetris, but then those Tetris, before they could throw anything, they're not taken out by the Charger. And 
again, just really impressive displays of skill coming in clutch when they really needed to. Yes, we look at the kill counts too from Powering. They might have lost the first game, but now they're coming right back. Yeah, looking at 15 and 13 KA, that's that's a lot. Uh, very, very much is. For our last match of this set, we've got Tower Control on Starfish Main Stage, which is a little bit of a favorite of mine. Um, heavy player. Hoping to see. Yeah, well, of course! I'm hoping to see the Heavy Splatling come out on here, or some form of Splatling. And, of course, we're going to be seeing Flanks galore, especially with what we've seen, like you were saying, the one long range and then three very short range close-up weapons. Hopefully we'll see a lot of interesting plays by these two teams. Yeah, I think we will see the Charger back, though. You saw what I played the last time. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see them Bamboo. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go longer range. But I think we'll see pretty similar comps. Maybe they'll switch off of some of the weapons, go for more missiles or long range stuff. But Or we could see someone pull out a Sploosh Neo, because <laughs> Sploosh Neo. And it's not bad on this map, though. And I'm, I'm cheering for that even more than I've ever cheered for Aerospray. <laughs> wow, you, you're just changing like that, huh? I just like weird short range weapons and also any type. So that's really my thing. Is, uh, oh, I you're not going to cheer for the, uh, the custom e leader? I don't know, the vanilla hydra? I'm not going to cheer for the custom e leader. <laughs> you don't like long range weapons? And Hey, leader! It's not it's not custom, but it's a leader. It's a leader, alright. Wait, no, it isn't custom. No, okay. it's, yeah, it's, it's, not, custom it's not a custom time. leader, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, Intimidation's also going to be pulling out the Kenza sloshing machine. Quite nice. I mean, it's a pretty common weapon. Nice, nice Slayer weapon. And on the other side of Power Inc., we're not going to be seeing changes in their comp. They, they know what they want to do. But I, uh, the leader is not quite something I'd expect, but I very much welcome it. Yeah, and I like the machine pick as well, because there's all ledges in this map, especially oh, that yeah. plot you're just kind of Oh, oh so no, the this cancel! And then the cancel and the My heart. And the, the machine's immediately taken out by the missiles, and it, it's gonna be a stalemate. The blue is gonna get a nice pick, dodging right around that E-leader, and trying to ledge camp them, actually! The leader just went back off, and... Oh my god! That's them, and the leader goes down to another member, to play with the Tetras, and Power is going to get the opening push here. I mean, yeah, Bloom pretty much kicked open the door for this opening push on their team, and now they are right back in the game with that nice super jump in. I mean, like I, I was saying earlier, you can play Zap aggressively if you wanted to, and it looks like that's exactly what they want to do. They're both inking up nicely, and Snow up here on the enemy team snipe, already with that bomb rush, going to get one, looking for two. Uh, helps with the second. Already we're at the second. That's a full wipe on the side of Intimidation Factor. Unfortunately not. Uh, it looks like Power Inc. is not intimidated at all by them as they are right up in their face and almost spawn camming at this point with the Ray. They are the spawn camming. They are literally we're spawn camming. Getting killed in oh their my spawn. god. And even though I'm Another surprised wipe. that Intimidation Factor is a hard time defending because they switched up a bit longer range. I think the machine would have really helped, but they just, they just couldn't keep up. They were just... They got flanked from hit from every angle, and that was just 100 zero. Usually, you see things get stalled around the second checkpoint, but even yeah. that formidable barrier, Power Inc. was just like, nope, we are going right through. Yeah, I think Blue and, just oh, really did something. Look at the K. Quit. Something the, quit the, them. The, the two, the two yeah. people top fragging for Power Inc. out fragging the entirety of. Intimidation Factor, oh, there are like 10 kills, and I think only like 5 or 6 came out for the impressive. entirety of Intimidation Factor. Impressive, very impressive, yeah. And yeah, it looks like... I was gonna say, I like think the... Oh, sorry, you go first. Sorry. Anyway, it looks like... In Power Inc., it might have looked like an even match at first, Power Inc. was just like, Nope, we, we're gonna bring this home, we're gonna show <laughs> off, and we're gonna finish this. Yeah, it was really impressive. And like, what honestly really kicked it all off for me was the Neo Splash first taking that position on Snipe and then using that bomb rush, getting those picks with it, and then enabling their team to jump up onto those grates on the, that top left side, and then from there basically just spawn camping. It was really nice. Now, before we head into uh, our next round, we have a, a little ad to give you a little t upcoming tournament. So, Quark, if you will, please take it away. So... Splat One Sunday is going to be... Are you ready for a throwback? Introducing Splat One Sunday. Splat One Sunday is a one-off Splatoon 1 event that will be happening on July 11th, 1, ha, ha, ha at 10 a.m. PDT or 1 e p.m. Eastern EDT. It's being hosted by Prochar and select members from IPL staff. And join us for an afternoon of 
I switched to single and formatted tournament on the Wii U, so dust off that old console and get to gaming. Join our Discord at discord.io slash splat one Sunday for more information. Or splat-one-sunday for more information. I mean, we are both... Yes, and speaking of select members from IPL staff, both Cork and I have a hand in running that. Um, and it is sure to be a very exciting event, so if you have a, a Wii U and Splatoon 1, do consider joining it. Um, with that, we are going to be heading into another break of a couple of minutes, and we will be right back, so do stay tuned.
trying to get something done. Fish. They're gonna get one pick, but oh, it's not the right person. They take out the the the, the splatling instead of the rainmaker, and so oh, what a double, double card to the rainmaker! That's a double on the rainmaker, and that's a full wipe on the side of Geek Squid. So Angels is just gonna be able to move forward. You can wait for one point. Go there. So the rainmaker had a really good spot to just push from. So now OK Rumor has only one more chance to push up. They do have advantage and two specials, but they have to get all the way to a knockout, so it's going to be very difficult for them. Let's see what they can do here. Honestly, I was not expecting them to be oh. Oh, They already died. Really comfortable there, abused all their range, and just keep the path clear for Brute Punch to basically threaten to get a KO. You see them, and more clams spawning right next to the basket. They just need one more clam to get the KO, and they don't have really have enough players left alive to defend against this sleepy Oh, oh I saw it. <laughs> and there you go. In Rainmaker on Manta Maria, it's definitely super beatable. Um, both sneaking from up close. And oh, then done. Oh, God. And Mission Instinct is our victor over Vaporwave in this round three. Wow. Snuck in there and managed to get that victory.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Low Ink Day 1. We are in the last round, round 6 of our Swiss portion. If you are just joining us now, I am Cater, and I am joined here today by Quark. Yes, and today we're going to be seeing Leg versus Maki <laughs> Maki Monsoon, a.k.a. m Cubes. And I mean, it's a fair team about the teams? Um... When have I ever known anything about a team? But actually, um, I've seen the, the, the members of LEG around. I, I recognize uh, Nepi and Michiru, but I don't really know anything about them, you know? Yeah, I think I've seen Mahi Monsoon on the stream a couple times, a couple times. So. Oh yeah, definitely. I really like their name, I like their tag. <laughs> so we're going to be going funny. on to spot zones on Monta Maria, which is certainly more an interesting map. Any thoughts? Oh, more M M's. More Mahi Mahi on Monsoon. Play Splatoon. I can't make it alliterative enough, but uh, Mahi yeah, Mahi, 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 Mahi wants to play Splatoon on Monta Maria. So but yeah, to the <laughs> But as for my thoughts on this map, uh, it's a double zone map, which means I automatically don't like it. But in all seriousness, the um, the the double zone really just makes this map a lot spicier, if you will, because you gotta. Uh, split your attention between the both. You have bunkers and the top grates that people can use that you can shoot people down from. It's a really nice map, despite me just being biased against it, because I don't really enjoy playing on it. I mean, you play heavy, though, and you see I don't like heavy this map. Do I don't like this map. Uh, I've definitely played <laughs> to other heavies, though, that, like, just sit on grates. That's fair, yeah. Ooh, Flingza! We see an Evenier coming out, and a Flingza, and then a Hydra. So we've got a battle of the long range here. Both sides can probably use that mid area to an extreme advantage, especially the Hydra. So that E leader is going to counter the Hydra pretty hard. And other, aside from the Hydra, Leg is going for a very short race call with the Tri Slasher K Jr. and Kensa 52 Gal. Yeah, and this Hydra, like you said, already facing some harassment from the leader, who promptly gets Booyah Bomb and forced to move. Seeing a few specials come out already, the bubbles, the booyah bomb that we saw here, and it uh, looks like the, the armor as well, an early turf control going to leg right now. Unfortunately, that KGAL is forced to back off, and it looks like they get killed as their wall breaks down just a second too early. Yeah, we see Mahi Mahi is pushing up there going. It looks like Endu almost would decide to push the leader, but was like, to be the Hydra. But then was just like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. But takes on another member, it's a 2 2 situation. There's a wall sitting in zone, but there's not much else, and then we see Echo and Cynthia are still here. They're keeping the zone, the Hydra was the only one really on the field right now, the other members are, like, coming back in, Hydra's starting to push up, and they're looking for something, they're gonna fire onto the far zone, and try to take that flick, and the flick is gonna wisely back off, and the timer is reaching, approaching 50, and it's probably gonna get under it, though, like does, as I said, like does manage to stall it, and for those bubbles, they can likely take the cap back. But the armor is coming out for the. the well, they said the junior flying, but they get the. The junior gets to pick anyway, though. Despite all this Maki Maki, he holds on to the zone. Yeah, still no penalty for them, although a very nice pick there from the try. And um, we're going to see the E-leader have to back off as they are finally getting pressured a little bit more. And there finally is the cap for leg as they are now a little bit more comfortable in their control of the zone. Uh, Cake out here going for a little bit of a ledge camp, but they have that booyah at the ready, so they're going to take control of Bunker as well as throw down a wall. Nice job on them. And they have that booyah that they can use to reach over the wall even if they can't reach with their main weapon. However, they will back off a little bit just because of those missiles that are getting sent out by Mahi Mahi Monsoon. Yeah, we see the boot, the uh, bombers coming out, the Booyah Bomb effectively capturing it, destroying all those bombs before they can really go off. And we see the Splash is looking for a pick, trying to get through that KGAL, but they just can't, and it's really close to the score within one point. And Legs seems to hold a little longer. The Burst Bomb pick coming out, but Mahi, but Ma, Mahi, Mahi can't get back in yet, and Leg continues to hold his own, just long enough to take the lead. Two down going on the side of Leg with Mahi Mahi in full control now the, of mid. But they have to hold it for quite a lot of penalty, and Leg is already coming back, so this is looking like it's going to be pretty close to see which is a trade coming out here. Another member of Mahi Mahi going down, 3-2 three, three, advantage on the side of Leg, and they got the bubbles coming. It looks like they're going to get the zone back, but they still have to get to this leader. And the mine's going off, this leader is just backing up, and the zones are held for Mahi 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 despite all that pressure. Backing up exactly what a leader does in a three-point advantage it is really not that solid in Splatons, especially as that penalty goes down into the single digit and is completely gone. We are so close to seeing the lead back for Mahi Mahi right now. We are within one point, but still, all of that paint is going down for a leg, and they managed to cap it just before that lead is taken, and so a point of 34 just gets slapped onto Mahi Mahi Monsoon, and is if to add insult to injury, they go three down as well. It is now leg back in comfortable control where they they like to be, and hopefully they can extend their lead to a little bit more of a comfort one to give themselves more breathing room. 
Yeah, they've definitely got chests. They've already, already shooted through the penalty. There's two specials on the side of Mahi Mahi ready, but that's probably not going to be deployed just yet. And we, we do see them coming out. Only one, the uh, missiles coming out. The another popping all their specials. The bomb, the booyahs coming out. They did extend their lead by 10 points. So Mahi Mahi is going to be in a harder position to come back. And Leg gets his own back, getting under 30. The armor is coming out for them as well. The rain's forcing them back. And a, but a member of Mahi Mahi is the first to go down. And the, all the members of Leg are still up. So they've got a chance to get this back. Getting another pick, taking out the Zap, which is going to keep Mahi Mahi without their armor. It's going to be over pushing. The zone goes back, getting under 20 now. And Leg just is not laying up the pressure. A trade coming down. But they still got the zones. They're still painting. And. Looks like Mahi Mahi finally has a person advantage, it looks like they're finally going to push in, but they still haven't managed to come, so the bubbles are coming out. Yeah, those bubbles are going to be a huge issue for them, especially with the Junior to back them up, get some, getting them all the way to 15 before the Junior gets picked off. And still this tryout here, relentless, unfortunately they get taken down finally, and then Mahi is just finally able to get some form of presence. I mean, that mine's still there, still a bit of an annoyance, but at least they have something to go off of in this last 25 seconds of the game. But the members of LEG are already back, already taking a zone and neutralizing the other as the members of Mahi struggle to keep control of mid, and it just goes, flips right back to LEG, and it's the Hydra putting down mines on the zone. The K Jr. coming out of the bubbles, the torpedoes, we've got 10 seconds left, and Leg just has to get control of both of- not Leg, sorry. Mahi Monsoon has to get control of both of zones, but yeah, the last minute torpedo kill, and that's just gonna be game. Yes, and looks like Leg's starting out really flexing their uh, lower ambulatory appendages, uh... and, <laughs> and doing a great job. Cork- oh, uh, someone is telling me to breathe. Uh, yes, I'm breathing, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I, mean, I, I talked a lot, I didn't forget to breathe, it's fine. Your commentary I, is just... fire. The, the breathing is, well, uh, take it as a compliment. I, mean, I guess that's what I'm breathing. Well, well I guess I can't, I need to be <laughs> oxygen if I'm going to spit fire, right? Because That is fair, that. that is fair. If I mean, need unless, I, unless I heated my body to the, it, its ignition temperature, wait, that wouldn't work. Uh, I'd die before I could spit <laughs> fire without oxygen. Well, <laughs> our, our next map mode is going to be Rainmaker on the Reef. So, our first sighting of this well-rounded map for us two, and hopefully should be interesting, because you can see a... You can certainly see Rainmaker moments on this map. Yeah, this is very much a map where there's pretty much two main paths once you get up to the pedestal that you're going longer around or going up in an ankle. But before that, there's a lot of different, like, slight off angles you can use to try to... A lot of just overlapping routes that you can use to push, and both teams are going to have to be pretty careful in picking. Most of the time, people choose to go just straight through mid, make a jump onto the platform, and then go up the... Uninkable, but th there's a lot of longer routes you can take that may seem more safe and may allow for teams to push much more effectively. Yeah, it just really depends on which way is clear, which way you're closer to. It's it's all about the you know the usual decision making of rainmaker, except you know there's a, a a lot more decisions to make. Also, someone's I am seeing that uh, Mahi Mahi is actually they have to win this game if they want to make alpha brackets. So this is a really important game for them. Oh, they need to win this set, and to win this set, they need to win this game because if they don't, it's two one for leg. With two legs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and it's two is the correct right number. Coming like... out from that fifty-two deco. Damn, that's let's see that much, but it's a really good pick if you want to race them. I do suppose so. I mean, 52 puts down a lot of paint and with those curling bombs as well. It's gonna be interesting to see how they, I guess, manage that with the aggressive positioning that, they, you know, how they balance the aggressive positioning that 52 usually takes with the very far back, safer positioning that Ray generally has to stay in. So they might not be race jamming too much, but they'll likely have, they'll likely be putting out more rays than, say, a vanilla sloshing machine would. Well, it's definitely good for defensive situations, but they can't press. <laughs> Position as aggressively. So we see Mahi Mahi as if they heard us telling them how much pressure they're under. Gets all the way up to 45, moving incredibly fast. Woo! The shot take out the Hydra. They do go three down, but they're going for another pick. They don't quite get it. That's gonna be a wipe, but they're gonna have plenty of time to respawn and play defense here. So the leg is moving just as fast, and they could get the lead back here given look how fast they're going to get the armor ready. Mahi yeah, Mahi's being armor. careful, they got to throw all those the triple suction bomb actually, so they they got to throw all those bombs. And we see Nephi going in, but they're not getting anything, they're getting pressured back, but it looks like the flings are already, or the Keisha already got their missiles online. And all the explosive pressure came out and held them back. And the shot managing to just barely avoid the Rainmaker explosion, and that's going to be two down on the side of Leg. 
the one of Mahi Mahi does go down as well. We're gonna have, looks like we're gonna have a bit of a stalemate in mid for right now. Yeah, the shots really putting on the aggression. You're seeing them dive and getting nice picks. If they had gotten that pick on the try earlier, it would have been great for their team. And um, they do die a little bit, but hey, that's what being a slayer gets to, you know. Both teams just full on the Rainmaker, forced to scatter. Legs forced to scatter a little bit by those missiles, though. But they do still have two specials online. That Ray is going to come up from the 52 because they already backed off. They just said, you know, hey, I can Ray a little bit now. And although maybe they're not going to quite get a pick with it, but it still, again, forces the members of Mahi Mahi to scatter, which is really, really what they need. However, Mahi's just still going to pick up that Raymaker, looking for another push. Unfortunately, they are one member down, so it's likely that they're not going to be in a great place to do it right now. You can see the Hydra getting ready to play defense. We're trying to hold Mahi Mahi back, but they got the armor coming out. Looks like they're going to play pretty offensive defense. It looks like that backfired on them. The tri are going down. The flings of it down as well, and the Ray's coming out, shutting down that push. Though, it's not too big a deal, because Mahi Mahi just needs to keep the stall, if anything, and they will win. That's not the most safest, that's not necessarily the safest way to do it, because if they mess if they mess up while just playing defense the whole time, it could go very badly. But, it, it is an option, and they don't need to worry about too much if they fail one, but... Hydra nearly gets taken out with missiles, but looks like they knew they were coming. And Mahi Mahi's looking to try to get back into mid a little bit more, get some more control. That's why they're using the missiles, but they didn't quite get it, and... The Rainmakers looks like it's just gonna reset, you know, armor coming out again for leg and they've got another armor on the ready they got the ray coming out again they got the balls they got everything they still haven't got any picks on mahi mahu is just literally turtle up right now and it's just firing missile after missile the one pick going to bust out looks like a trade and the missile the taking missiles. the high with three down on leg and if they can take they got the slasher as well nice the whole team and they're gonna go and they, they've got a chance here. they just need to move fast and they are moving they are schmooving and they are getting the a more of a lead getting all the way down to 38 and the K shot, the K Jr. stopping it, but the Mahi Mahi only goes two down. They've got plenty of time to organize a defense as well. They didn't have to commit their entire team just to that one push, and this is going to make it even harder for Leg to get it. But if they get onto the enemy, well, they definitely could, but they haven't. They've struggled to get that far. The Jr. is going on the bubbles, and this is looking like a, a bit of an ugly situation for whoever they just chased up. The jump backs are safe, and so the bubbles end up being wasted. The tri are going in, getting a pick, and now it's going to get blown wide open for, like, the missiles coming out of two down, and they're going to knock him in the lead, and then they run away, but, like, and then Mahi Mahi is going in hot, they're going to get the push, they're going to get the picks, and they're going to get the Rainmaker, but the Mitchell comes out of nowhere, three down. and it's three down, they, and it's looking like, uh, like's going to get it, but no, the bomb comes out, and that's, that's, whoa, yeah, I don't know how Mahi Mahi is still holding on, I should breathe. Yeah, you should breathe. I can take over if you want. Mahi finally grabbing the Rainmaker, taking it out to a little bit of a safer spot. They do get taken out, but at least they're not hanging on by just a thread right now. We are in the last 26 seconds of this match that Pop went to leg, but they they still have a member down that Kegel is down. Nepi over here on the try looking for something, anything, using the, the ledge cam to their advantage as well as popping armor, but really just not finding that much. The bubbles came out of the K Jr. as well, but they didn't really amount to much as the Raymaker finally just reset, and now it's back to square one for leg as they have five seconds left. They're going to pick it up in order to ensure overtime, but now they've got literally a timer on their head as they struggle to, to maintain some form of, of turf control. And you see, I mean, all the specials come Coming out, but the those bombs coming out on the side of uh, uh, Mahi as well as the, the the armor is ready for them too. And April here is just trying their best, but there's so much on them. The missiles are behind them. The rain is coming up to them. Two of their teammates are down. They can't hold on for much longer as bombs just continue to come up closer and closer. They're being pushed back further and further, which is not where they want to be at all. Junior getting taken out, and really, I mean, Mahi is doing exactly what you're talking about. They're just turtling up. They're bomb spamming, and finally the Raymaker gets taken out, and... Wow. That was some exceptional defense for Mahi. Like, that stop, they just kept throwing- they never stopped throwing bombs. And they- and that's how they kept it. That's what triple suction bomb gets you. And th that spot, one spot bomb from the one person alive to stop that last step of the push, so that was just yeah. impressive. Look at those kill counts on both teams. teams. Yeah, I was gonna really say, like, the- and 11 missiles coming out as well. Oh my god! The, the, I think that's what helped a lot, and you saw them at the end saving their specials. They kept oh, yeah. throwing bombs until they finally need to use their specials, and then- well, three suction bombs, you have a, you essentially have a mini bomb rush, especially if, if, you, especially if you, say, have a double bomb zap or anything. Yeah, I kept thinking it was a suction bomb rush from reality, it was just a bunch of suction bombs Me getting too. thrown out from all of the members. We're gonna what move on to the... Oh, uh, you, go, you go ahead, I've been doing it. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, you're too kind. Uh, we're gonna be moving on to the last match of the set, Clam Blitz on Macomart. 
which uh, another one of those maps where the clam basket is very close to mid, similar to Humpback, which is what we saw earlier. So we might see a lot of fast pushage from both teams here. Yeah, it was just a mahi mahi. If they keep that trickle suction bomb, might work, but I think they'll opt for maybe mist or something might help them turn off the way they're playing. Really good blend of defense and offense we saw, and both teams, I think, are going to be playing. We saw how crazy they play at the end there. We're going to probably see the same aggression coming out. And Again, it's do or die for Mahi Mahi if they want to make Alpha, which I'm sure would be a pretty big deal for them. So I'm sure yeah. and I'm sure both teams, this is a pretty important match for because it is the last match of the tournament, and it's going to help decide their final standings. As all the matches are, but this is just... it's a, There's probably a bit more pressure right now. Yeah, and ending... how close everything was. Yeah, and the, the ending that might have is something from around. Or like, if you lose by one, because it's really a stray bomb from the CDS. Yeah. I mean, it yeah, was I a miracle that, I that the CDS was bomb. Yep, like that. Sorry, I'm going to pretend I didn't fun. hear that and move Is on. Is that bad of a pun? <laughs> We're starting the last match, which is Clam puts on Mart. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be starting. Uh, yeah, that's pretty CDS coming back. Pop coming out. So it looks like they're saying they're, again, not using much range, but we see the CDS coming out. Like, Gal with the wall is going to help a lot, I think, as well. Just putting out those barriers. They're only running a single missile this time, but I think that will help. I don't. The, the double, or I thought it was triple, but double missiles. We see a very similar comp coming out of. Like as well, the Hydro for the long range power, the k Gal that they've been running in the, in the first match can help us a lot of Slayer. They got the bubbles are going to really help, and the armor as well. So I think the Tri is just very strong on this map as well, so, as is the Waller. So I think we're going to see a very good fight team picking weapons that are really well suited to the situation. And we see one going down on both sides, though. Echo's going to get called out. They nearly get, they nearly get taken out by Crossfire, but they don't quite die. And Though Leg is going to have the upper hand here, it looks like they're going to make a push if they can get through the splat wall, which they can't. <laughs> the singular wall stops the entirety of the push. <laughs> Not actually, but nice play out of the roller here, and that looks like that power clan's going to probably be left to die unless more members of Leg sacrifice their lives for it. Um, and just like that, the, the the tables have turned, and now it is Echo here carrying that clam with the Flingza, looking to get to looking to dunk that clam. They're so close yet so far, they don't want to go in rashly. And with two of their teammates down, it looks like they're going they're going to be retreating a little bit, which is a pretty wise decision, especially when they're staring down a blue bomb. Yeah, I'm mean, surprised they didn't quite have it. They didn't make the push. Looks like they didn't have enough specials though. Leg goes in with the first, getting the first pick, the tri slasher getting another one. The going get, getting another 77, which is the kind of pick. The tri gets a crucial pick on that roller. They're gonna get held back. The CDS is forced to back up, and the tri playing so aggressively, they're taken out. But during that, while we were watching this, they went all the way into the 59. And Mitrio gets another pick, getting several more cleanse in before they get finally taken out. It seems like Leg saw this loss, and now they're just playing on their minds. And they didn't quite go in together, but they did such well on their own. They did so well on their own, just taking, really, holding out for a very long time on 2v1s, and 3v1s even. Mm, yeah, that's exactly what you need to do in order to extend these pushes just to give your teammates time to come back with clams, and like you said, that's pretty much exactly what happened. This Hydra here is also taking full advantage of their range. You see, they have control of this stack over here that Mahi Mahi is trying to camp out on, but they really just aren't able to because of the Hydra and their area control. Their crossfire forcing them to back off, and that's three down on the side of Mahi Mahi. They had two power clans, but they're going to be forced to back up. Cynthia here on the zap just running for their life as that Bleabon nearly killed them and then they're just back on defense and even though there's no power clams for for leg they're just continuously up in mahi mahi's face not letting them breathe at all yeah and echo's doing a really good job holding out despite all this pressure but mahi mahi really needs to figure a way to break back out because right now i'm sure they kind of came in maybe came in i'm really excited we oh my god we pulled that last match off but now they need to collect themselves a bit it looks like and they're doing so getting two down Going in, they seem to go in together because they've been having a struggle with individual skill against them. Then Echo gets the, doesn't get the pick, but forces the Booyah Bomb, forces the, but they went to that, looks like the two mem surviving members of Leg were just like, no, you, we might be at number two to one, but we're going to take half of us with you and you're not going to get to push while well, the rest of our team responds. And the juniors are already putting the bubbles out, we've been seeing the play phenomenally the entire time. And look at the K of the, the uh, gal on the side of Leg leading by a whole lot. How are they staying alive inside of that bubble? 
I mean, they're finally taken out, but the Junior just using their special as much as they can. Unfortunate clan miss, though. Nebby on the try, still going for something, a double, meaning taken out by the Gal before they can pick up that clan, but still really nice stalling on their end as we head into the last minute and 20 seconds of this match. Uh, still struggling a little bit on the side of Mahi Mahi to get, to get back and get mid control, though they do have a good amount of clans on their side, so if they just get picks on leg, which they are doing, leg is too down right now, they can still make something happen. Hydra tossing that clam away in favor of not having a giant target on their back, but we've got one power clam going in, and uh, hopefully two power clams going in. They're, they're so close, one. they didn't even put their three down! They're going the three down. And the CDS pull up another miracle play, and it doesn't look like it can because they get taken out by the gal, and this has got to hurt for them. But the CDS almost saves the game yet again, but just not. It looks like their luck might have just run out for the day as Mishiru on the gal already just so up, and it closed them in the face of Mahi Mahi. I mean, they're so close yet so far. If they can just get another power clan, they can try and do something, but they don't have any clans right now. I mean, all the clans on the side of leg are just hoarding them all right now, basically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the bubble oh double! God, I, thought, I thought it was a triple. I just saw, I looked at someone else with that at the same time. It was a wipe, which still... Oh my that's goodness. That's gonna finish off my... There's no way they can... Another power clan, and that's Three a KO! Three power clans yeah. in to seal the deal and seal the KO for leg in that very eventful game three. Yeah, it was really another really close game again. We saw a really good game to carry out. I'm impressed. Mahi Mahi put an amazing fight up. Uh, they were within striking. It just felt oh, like yeah. they this last match they struggled a bit, like taking out, managing to take out all the members of Mahi of uh, leg who just sort of were like, we're outnumbered. Okay, we'll just kill you and. That, that probably hurt them, but now that but they still put it really close and a really great way to finish off day one of this tournament. Yeah, definitely. That may be the end of the tournament, but before we wrap up this stream, we actually have something else to, to talk about. Yes, we do have some ads. Uh, more tournaments to advertise, because oh, yeah. who doesn't Many. like more tournaments? Many things are going on in the community. First of all, we've got Shinex's Challenge Tournament. So, if you are an are you an artist? Anybody? I mean, I know there's a lot of artists out there in this community. If you are an artist, then you are a VIP in the Shinex Challenge Tournament. The tournament requires each team, each team to have at least one artist, and one artist is required to be playing the entire tournament. So if you are free on Saturday, July 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern, then you are in luck because that's when the tournament is. You can check out uh, discord.io slash shinkshinex for more information, and top four in the tournament will get art prizes, and the first place also gets $200. Speaking of $200, we also have Aquatic Cup Pride Edition happening a few hours after Lowing tonight. They've been sponsored this month by DreamHack Community Clash, and there's a prize pool of $200. It's going to be a counterpick only tournament with Turf War included, and it's going to be tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, so they hope to see you there. Also remember that Inkling Performance Labs, we still have our staff applications open. We're always looking for additions to our production and commentary teams, as well as tournament staff. So if you are helping, interested in helping out in these areas, please fill out the form. If you are interested in more than one area, you can also fill out the form multiple times. That's iplabs.inc slash help us. And that's how I got in here. So, <laughs> so you know, if you're interested, just apply. You've got nothing to lose. Yes, and uh, I think that's all. We should probably do the whole saying our Twitter's thing. Sure, where can the wonderful people in the audience find you on the internet? They can find me at Strategecorked on Twitter. That's pretty much my entire social media presence if you want to just see me retweet art all the time. <laughs> Understandable. Have a nice day. You can find me on Twitter at Cater underscore, uh, where I tweet about the things that I commentate a lot because I bounce around uh, between a lot of different organizations. But yeah, uh, that's going to do it for day one of the tournament. We've got day two tomorrow, so do come back for that and some more amazing commentators here at IPL. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you to everybody playing the stream. Thank you to everybody behind the scenes, the TOs that all help staff and commentate. Um, I had a blast commentating with you to, uh, today, Cork, and yeah, see you all around. Yeah, it was really fun. Goodbye, everyone. Have a nice day, and uh, play some stuff too. I don't know.